podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Saturday, September 10th, 2022. This is episode 1925. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by userway.org. Userway is the world's number one accessibility solution, and it's committed to enabling the fundamental human right of digital accessibility for everyone. When you're ready to make your site compliant, deciding which solution to use is an easy choice to make. Go to userway.org slash twit for 30% off Userway's AI-powered accessibility solution. And by stamps.com. Get ahead of the holiday chaos this year. Sign up at stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter the code TWIT for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a digital scan. Why, well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Micah Sargent, tech guy too, Hello. joining us in studio. Well, good to see you, Micah. Thank this you. This is the show where we talk about computers. Uh, computers. What a funny old <laughs> old fashioned phrase is that, huh? <laughs> we talk about computers, uh, smartphones, much more likely, smart watches, tablets, the internet, home theater, digital photography, all of that stuff. You know, anything technology. Mm -hmm. That seems technology. straightforward. Yeah. Uh, I'm coming to you right now from Dynamic Island <laughs> in the beautiful <laughs> South Pacific. Micah Sargent has returned. Oh. From his voyage to Cupertino, yes, deep first into time. The <laughs> was that your first time? It was my first time uh, being invited there as a member of the press uh, and attending an event, and um, it was n not what I expected in some ways. And well, tell me, tell me. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I knew going into it that it was going to be most likely us watching uh, a TV. Film. Yeah. Yeah. And big that, screen TV, but TV. Uh, yeah. Big screen TV. Very great color. Uh, Scott Wilkinson would be impressed, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but I actually next time, would you find out what kind of screen it is? I will. I will go do behind it or something and yeah. say, hey, dudes, is it micro <laughs> LED, mini it. LED? What do you got there? Yeah. Because I'm looking is like, is there a projector somewhere? Is this just a huge screen? Yeah. Um, so that part was uh, really cool. Of course, uh, Tim Cook stepped out before the show had did started. Did he say good morning? He said good morning good. before okay. he even said good morning. Good. And he did make a twice. note that that was TV. yeah, exactly three uh, three years since anyone had been it's in kind Steve of amazing. Jobs theater. You know, it's funny. That's exactly what Motley Crue said too. <laughs> they must have uh, compared I, notes. I saw them on uh, on Wednesday, and uh, they said, "Oh, we've been waiting two years for this." <laughs> So uh, there you go. You know, we haven't done anything for two and a half, three years. It's kind of sad. Yeah. In the meantime, were there a lot of you? I saw you and Jason Snow wearing masks. Were there yeah. a lot of masks in uh, in evidence? No, no, no. Most people weren't. No. None um, of the Apple executives had masks on. Uh, -uh. uh Part it, of their, I think, propaganda campaign to get people to come back to work the, last week. That may right? very well come be. Come back to work. Yeah. Everything's over. Look, we're all we're yeah. all fine. Forget the. 15,000 people who died last week. It's not, you yeah, know. Yeah, I just didn't feel comfortable, neither did Jason being Did you wear it the whole time? No, only while we were in the Steve Jobs Theater. Outside, you were uh, okay. Outside yeah, felt yeah. fine. Okay. And even in um, a few places where there were just fewer people around, I, I felt okay with that. Nikki Six didn't wear a mask either. Just I, I don't know who that is. That. Yeah, ba bass player for the <laughs> Oh, gotcha, the gotcha, gotcha. The crew. The crew. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to, you know, compete with you. You obviously got the best <laughs> ticket uh, in town. Uh, so here's the thing. I was not prepa prepared for how much of a zoo it there was. There were a lot of people. It was only a thousand people the, in a the A thousand people theater. in the theater. Were they all journalists or were there Apple people? No, it was, I would say, um, quite a few Apple people. Yeah. Uh, sort of on the left side were the journalists. On the right side were the I don't know. All I know is I wasn't allowed over on the right side of the Steve Jobs Theater. Oh, really? They yeah. Said, no, no, you can't go over And there. then down below were employees and then the execs who nice. were there to watch it. So Yeah, they like to do that. Uh, in the past, they've always done that because... For two reasons. One, to honor the people who put the work into the hardware. So Steve Jobs used to introduce them, say, stand up, and they would stand up. The other reason, a little more cynical, they like to get some applause. And journalists are supposed to sit on their hands. This, Leo, I've got to tell you, um, look it up. 
The Missouri School of Journalism in Columbia, Missouri, is one of the premier journalism schools in the country. It's where I went. I oh, was instilled. You're a trained journalist. I was instilled with journalistic principles. Nice. And so I have to tell you that a lot of what I saw there made me uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really a fanboy summit of journalists. Yes. Uh, journalist fanboys. Oh, well, that's the thing. I don't feel comfortable calling many of them journalists because right. I, that, that word has has meaning to me. And so there were a lot of uh, folks there who were news reporters for sure, who were like waiting in line to take a photo with Tim Cook and it, it, all of that kind of, I don't, I don't dig that vibe. I don't think we should make celebrities out of people who are heads of companies. And I, I felt, uh, that part of it kind of was just like, ah, I, I can't be part of that. Well, that. especially if you're there to cover the technology objectively. Yes. The stuff that people are going to spend their hard earned money on. Yeah. And that is what I, I think is, you know, I wanted to keep in mind the whole time in uh, talking about it. And the other thing that did surprise me um, was I had expected that the people who were giving the demos, giving the briefs, would be very trained and very knowledgeable about things. And yeah. I ended up asking a curveball of a question, apparently, uh, because the person had to flag down this other person <laughs> who then had to go and find the person who could oh, answer my know. question. And here was my question, Leo. The new AirPods Pro, the second generation, yeah. comes with four sizes of ear tips. Yes. Now they make an extra small. Yes. You can buy those separately. One of our uh, followers asked me, uh, can I buy the extra small ear tips and use them with my first gen AirPods? Oh, good question. So I went over to the person no idea. who was doing the AirPods Pro and she was like, I, I just really don't want to give you the wrong answer and then it's not Well, right. that's, okay, that's credit, credit there. Credit that she didn't want to give the wrong answer, but I just thought, Surely that, you know, I, I expected that they knew a little bit more than they did. My guess is that they do fit, right? I mean, they're they not don't. Make, they don't? They, they, well, here's what I'll say. They are not officially compatible, okay. but what I'm going mean, to do. It's just a little rubber thing right. that you could stretch over well, the but nub. It's got, it's got like this, uh, these four little clasps that are built into uh, the first gen AirPods. And okay. I don't know if it's the same for the second. So okay. I will be trying it. I did personally purchase some uh, second gen some AirPods silicone Pro. silicone tips? No, no. The second gen AirPods Pro, which will come with extra I small I also in the purchased box. those, purchased those. So yeah. I'll be able to get it. And you, it a try. you could see, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good because I th my wife, among others, uh, say, I don't wear those because they're too big for my little shell like my ears. ears. You have small ears. Yeah, I. but the small work for me uh, okay. still. But yeah, apparently well, there are quite a few people. They put extra small there. in there. I think that's, that's they, a small thing to do. Literally. They must have heard that that a was. Tiny little uh, feature. More importantly, those AirPod 2s will have the new Bluetooth LE 5.2 and. We think LC3 codec, which makes should make it sound better, both the music and you should sound better on calls. Yes. And I think uh, I, I did not know that AirPods Pro are Apple's most popular headphones. I was surprised. He, it, uh, he, somebody said that, Tim or somebody. Yeah, Tim. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised to hear that because those are the most expensive, 250 bucks. Yeah. I thought for sure it would just be the standard AirPods. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the AirPods Pro. And I will tell you too. I was uh, shocked at shocked, the, I tell you. shocked. I tell you at the way that the audience reacted for the AirPods Pro segment. I thought it'd be a little bit more quiet than it was, but everyone was ooh ah e. So we didn't it, watching at home, watching the stream, didn't hear what was going on in the theater. They just played the stream, mm -hmm. so we didn't hear the applause or the oohs or the ahs. There was quite a bit of that. Huh? Quite a bit of because uh, some some applause, but I got to tell you, the best moment was when they first said the words dynamic island and the whole audience laughed they laughed they laughed everybody thought like Shh, were you really calling it that was how the laugh sounded like come on the dynamic island <laughs> the plane the plane so i think uh the general reaction in the outside world has been ho-hum uh incremental improvements this is kind of the way it's been for the last few years mm -hmm. apple's not going to make any leaps because but we're They've got, they've figured it out. There's nothing new under the sun, and it's hard to think of something new. But there were a few interesting new things, and Dynamic Island is one of them. That was such a clever way of, I don't know if it you know was on necessarily on purpose, but a lot of the stuff we know when it comes to hardware leaks ahead of time. We know about what's going to be happening. And so we knew that there was going to be likely a new punch design, meaning that at the top of the screen, you would have two different cutouts. But Apple found a way to use software to meld with that hardware to create this unique kind of dynamic area at the top of the screen and mask the fact that you had these two cutouts. It's, it's kind of making lemonade out of lemons. Uh huh. They have to do that hole punch so the camera, they can't yet see through the screen so the camera can see you. 
Uh, but I think they've done something quite interesting. And this is the first new user interface feature in a smartphone in a long time. <laughs> a very long time. time, yeah. So I think it is kind of interesting. That was probably my favorite moment overall, aside from the fact that now AirPods Pro, you can swipe to turn up and down the volume. <laughs> You know, I was surprised that you couldn't do that before. Yeah, that I thought you could. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. So I didn't even. That was like, well, wait, what? They that was have? the one time where I actually said something. You out gasped loud. out loud. And can I tell you about the most embarrassing moment of the event? Yeah. They're talking about the Series Eight Apple Watch, right? Mm -hmm. Series Eight, Series Eight, Series Eight. Mm -hmm. My phone, at top volume, decides that hello, Series Eight Siri. is hello Siri, and proceeds to respond at top volume in this theater. Oh, and Leo, did people stare at you? Well, Jason did. Jason <laughs> Snell was sitting beside me. He was sitting me. next to you. Most other people couldn't hear it because it was loud enough. But normally you hit that side button and it quiets it down, right? In the middle of my panic, I'm accidentally screenshotting it over and oh, over again. It. <laughs> so it just keeps going and talking. Oh, I was horrifying. Not but, my, not, no. not, look, it, I've been embarrassed at Apple events too. It's okay. You'll survive. <sighs> you may never be invited that. back. <laughs> yeah. You'll survive. That was the end of it. There was another person there who, uh, after every time they would announce a new spec for the iPhone, yeah. the person would say, wow. And they did it perfectly timed with the pauses. So the theater was quiet and you just hear, wow. The iPhone but, is now waterproof. Wow. wow. It's got 512. A, wow. A wag. This person was a wag. <laughs> yes. This was in intentionally... They were in the press area. Mocking uh, uh, the... Uh, or I, maybe they were serious. I don't I don't know if it was sort of a cultural thing. They were... Uh, they. It was odd when they came and they've made it very clear that they were from a different country. Uh, uh, by maybe that's how they do that. it in that country. I, yeah, I don't know, but yeah. they just were very appreciative. It's sort yeah. of like smacking your lips when you eat food or burping in right. some places. You know, wow. it's like, mm, wow. you know, it's wow. good. Wow. <laughs> uh, so two, four new phones: the iPhone, uh, iPhone Plus, iPhone 14, iPhone 14 Plus, iPhone Pro, 14 Pro, iPhone 14 Pro Max. Mm -hmm. No real surprises. Everything else that was rumored was there. We weren't sure if they'd have satellite emergency features. They do. They do. They that was quite impressive. That. Although, since we haven't tried it, in fact, I don't know how they're, we're going to review it without calling helicopters down oh, to save us. That's a good uh, point. <laughs> Uh, this could be good if it works. You know, they're doing a deal with Global Star, not SpaceX, to yes. do this. In fact, got a SpaceX they're, deal. They're uh, sort of they're investing. What was it like? Yeah. Millions of dollars. They're going to spend the money that it will take to launch new rockets to support this Apple feature will be 95% paid by Apple. Wow. And they got the money. Oh, I just launch a wow. few rockets. Wow. wow. See? Yeah. It is wow. You know, you can't, you can't help <laughs> can't it. Help it. Can't Sometimes help it. Sometimes it just comes out. Uh, incidentally, uh, Scooter X tells me, according to a tweet from Mark Gurman, that the phrase dynamic island was trademarked oh. in Jamaica on July 12th. It wasn't discovered because you can only search for trademarks filed in Jamaica by going to Jamaica's <laughs> trademark and patent office. So nobody noticed. Now, uh, they far. also mentioned new AirPods, mm -hmm. as we mentioned, the AirPod Pro 2. Mm -hmm. not, not No AirPods 3 are still AirPods 3. And uh, the, wa well, the watch, the Series 8 watch, and then the Ultra, Ultra. Which we didn't know they were going to call it that. Yeah. You tried on the Ultra. I did. So that was the one I got the most hands-on time with. Um, it, and so the Apple Watch Ultra is a titanium watch that is a lot bigger. Um, and it is all for these folks who are trying to, you know, that are adventuring, are, are stepping out. I ordered one. Yeah, I'm actually really excited for you because <laughs> I think, I was telling you this uh, in, in... Well, now I can go scuba diving down to 100 meters. I actually, I'm, I'm uh, looking into getting scuba certified, but... Are you? Uh, yeah, well, you should get one too. Oh, I've got, I'm, I've got the Series 8. I'm, okay. I'm just getting this. That's good. We should, we should split the difference. You're getting the purple iPhone 14 Pro Max, I yes. presume. Yes, I'm getting, I was forced to, the gold. The gold. It was oh. the only color that was available. Fortunately, I'll be putting it in a case. Yeah, exactly. Same oh, I like it. I like my gold iPhone. Uh, but I think it's going to look good. Back to the Ultra. I think it's going to look great on your wrist. And well, I'm a big person, so it might not look so clunky. It looked kind of big on you. You also said it was lighter than one. Expected. I could not believe it, honestly. And yeah. I'm not. I'm not. This is not me getting starry eyed or anything like that. Well, you weren't I, alone. That's, yeah. titanium is a very lightweight. Titanium material. is very lightweight, yeah. and the trail band that they came that it came with uh, attached was also very lightweight. I got the dive band. That that's a cool band. That's a cool <laughs> band. I'm going diving. Yeah. Eighty eight, eighty eight. <laughs> ask Leo. Well, if the room fills up with water, I'll be at least able to tell you what time I died. <laughs> eighty eight, eighty eight. Ask Leo the phone number. Michael Sargent, Leo Laporte, your tech guys will go to your calls right after this.
It does not come with a chin strap. Uh, I was telling Lisa, if uh, should I be invited back in the future? You will be. I'm going to. You will be. Uh, you're, you're now. You're now part of the fam. I need to. Did you go wow after every spec? <laughs> no. <laughs> they heard me, so I did that on purpose. Yeah. No, I, I'm going to want to. Uh, hopefully, if you'll allow me, borrow a camera that has a zoom lens. Oh yeah, yeah. Because that was the most difficult part of everything was edging past all these other people. There are a lot of... To, so a thousand people doesn't sound like a lot, but even the pictures I saw looked pretty crowded. Very. I mean, yeah. I, I was honestly surprised at how little um, structure there was to the hands-on area. I was not expecting... Oh, it was it just like just, a mob? It's just a... Yeah. You don't line a, up? No, you don't line up at all. Yeah. And in fact, it was kind of like how some people, when a movie ends, they like to be the first ones out. Before the lights had dimmed or had gone People back were up, running, after, they were running, running, yeah, to get See, there first. This is because you no longer have journalists going; you have YouTube celebrities, that was a influencers, huge part of the and these people have no couth. And in fact, uh, Leo, that I, I kind of did see that. I, if you look around, I could see, oh, there are people I know that are journalists yeah, and yeah. they're sort of like hanging back. Yeah, doing the right thing. Yeah. And it was, I mean, I got ran into rodeo. a couple of times. Uh, I, there was one time that I, I did get a little upset because um, I, I felt a little tr treated almost like I was some sort of out of the way object. Yeah. Because you're in my way. I've got links to click. Well, it was these two photographers who were trying to film an exec. And they, I was facing this way, the exec was behind me, and the one stood right here and the other stood right here, <laughs> so close in my space, both not wearing masks. And the one guy nearly used my shoulder like a tripod or like a monopod, sort of resting his uh, arm on me to be able to take a photo. And here's the picture of the photo. Yeah, <laughs> might as well have been. I, Justine, and Tim Cook. Yeah, well, to her, I guess Justine's never claimed to be a journalist right and but, i'm not i am not sliding the folks who that i was talking about specifically my own feelings no, i'm about with that. you i just it doesn't feel i'm right with you for me. i think it's not right for us and it's one of the reasons i don't mind not going to these events they kind of make me queasy now they really become fan fests mm -hmm. um yeah and that's why i definitely tried to turn it toward seeing the responses that people are having yeah. live the people are asking me questions and yeah. i think that uh, matthew panzerino does a good job of that too yeah i think uh panzo was pretty good about holding back i would imagine yeah and and just answering people's and questions he gets access to everybody anyway yeah so he doesn't he's no rush for him but there but the what the vloggers and the bloggers and the youtubers are trying to just get the first hands-on you know ours technically had a hands-on they said well after a couple of minutes we were able to <laughs> it's like come on you had you had you had they actually didn't say minutes they had moments they had several moments with the new iphone we have this to report it's like yeah no thank yeah. you anyway so anyway there we go yeah 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 i like dynamic island i do uh, too I uh think it I grew think, on me in fact andy anako uh said uh and he's no uh you know fanboy he said uh, this is a probably a very important new user interface um I imagine I, I kind it'll of be agree around with for him. a while. Yeah. It's one of the reasons I wanted to... I'm actually going to have to drive down to Marin on Friday to get this phone, this gold phone. So that was the only phone left in, in the, within 100 miles. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, I didn't order the Apple Watch until the day after. Um, That's the 23rd. Yeah, and so I... You, you, exactly. What's is it delayed to past the twenty third? No, so I. No, they said the twenty third. It's interesting. Same thing. I ordered AirPods Pro. Your two. watch won't be available until the twenty third. Mine. Uh, oh, was it would have been the sixteenth. Oh, yeah, so okay. I'm getting in mine on the seventeenth. No, yeah, the seventeenth. Oh, after we're done with the tech guy. That's fine. I have to go and get it. I'll have my dive watch in two weeks. Yes. I'm gonna be diving. Perfect song for Kim Schaffer, the phone angel. Buzz, buzz. The phone is ringing. Hello, Kim Schaffer. Hello. Good to see you. You too. What's new? Well, I, uh, I in two weeks I will have a watch that will allow me to <laughs> run a marathon, bicycle for Dive. how many miles was it? Twenty, oh, miles, 20 miles. Climb a mountain. Climb a mountain. Swim. Uh, all of that. The Makes watch will survive. I shall not. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me irritated. I just uh, had to get a new watch in April. This is this is Apple competing with the Garmin Extreme Sport watches, and it's and it's so silly because you know that most of the people who buy it will be me. Aspirational, As, aspirational, even that. not even aspirational. It, yeah. We know perfectly well we won't be doing any of those things. No scuba for you. No, I love scuba. You've, I do, but I wouldn't nowadays. I don't think I would go anymore because oh. I think it's for your your young people. It's good. 
At my age, you know, it's a very dangerous. The sport. bends are more mm. common. Well, that's now the thanks to the Apple Watch, which will, by the way, fit so over my uh, your my dive suit. Dive suit, because um, I got that. I got that band, so uh -huh. it would go right the over the stretchy one. Yeah, yeah, the stretchy one go go right over that. Uh, I won't have to worry about the bends. The watch will say <laughs> you're getting the bends. You get. You'll say, "Don't stop. Whatever you're doing, go home and go to bed." Because <laughs> what are you doing? What out are here? you doing? What are you doing? You're crazy, <laughs> Kim. Who should we? Uh, who should we? Who should we talk to here? Uh, let's go to. Um, oh no, I can't see. Line one. What you can't see? What happened? John, oh well, you know. Are they well, tiny? No, I. I compacted the screen. John in Leesburg, Virginia. Do not compact the screen. Whatever that means. <laughs> do not do it. It's because of high pressure underwater. <laughs> oh, the, that's I it. I have the bends. Your, your screen has the bends. Yeah, get those nitrogen bubbles out. Thank you, Kim. You're welcome. Hello there, John in Leesburg, Virginia. Leo Laporte, microsurgeon. Good to well, talk to you. I'm good to talk to you, too. Uh, so I'm having a strange problem with Chrome. Uh where since I think the last update or something, the the reader mode has disappeared. And this is something I use all the time because uh, I use screen readers and and if I'm reading an article, then the, the reader mode is very nice. I enabled it with the flags and so forth, but now the flag seems to have disappeared too. So I'm, I love reader mode. I don't. I haven't used it on Chrome. But I've used it on uh, Safari, and I think it's a, a great feature. What happened to reader modes? Uh, any? Do you know, Micah? Is I'm it seeing gone? that it did disappear, but there's a way to get it back. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to find you. Oh, it's in the Chrome flags. Oh, no. Oh, so this God. means you got to go. The flag is, the flag is gone. <gasps> the flag is gone? I, I, I tried to find the flag. And it's not there. So the you, technique you, here is you go to the address bar, the, the URL bar, and you yeah, type Chrome, Chrome colon, colon slash slash flags. flags. And then you right. can do a search. Now, maybe you don't search for reader anymore. What is the Chrome flag? Is it reader? So this was an article from May. Uh, of, yeah, yeah, of this year. That's no good because yeah. it was fine then. This, this just happened. What is the current version of Chrome? Because according to Google, it was supposed to return in Chrome 102. Oh. So if we're on 104, yeah, yeah, it should be... It, it was fine then. Huh. So then it's gone again, is what you're saying. What is... Yeah. Why don't they want reader mode? Oh, I know why. There's no ads in it. Uh-huh. Right. Oh. Oh. And Google, which, of course, really has tried in so many ways to make money in every possible way and has failed except for selling ads. Might have to use an extension. Uh, yeah, I'm looking every in March. You could bring it back. I'm, I see this, but I don't see anything modern. Let's we'll see if we can keep listening, if you will, John. We'll see what we can do. Leo Laporte, Micah Sergeant, your tech guys. Okay, so somebody, are you out of sync? Are you using 105? Yeah, I don't have Chrome on this because uh, I like to keep it pure. Where do I have Chrome? <laughs> where do I have Chrome? Do I have Chrome? I have Chrome on here. I don't know if, if it's different from the Mac. Let me open Chrome. Set Chrome as your default browser? No. Help Chrome get better by saving all, sending all your stuff to Google? No. Oh, there is a flag that you can use. Yeah. Uh, there's a flag called temporarily unexpire M104 <laughs> flags. And if you unexpire uh -huh. those M104 flags, then reader mode will come back. So let's see here. So uh, I can't just enter reader. Well, wait a minute. You've got it. I've got it here. This is on a Mac. Let me see what version of Chrome we're using. Maybe, maybe I don't have a, a recent version of Chrome. Where does Chrome hide this now? About Google Chrome. Oh, I had 104. Let's 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 uh, relaunch and see if this is good. This is a good test. Yes. Because now I'm launching 105. Now we'll go to Chrome colon flag slash clash. <laughs> Same thing. Dynamic Island Chrome. <laughs> Experiments. Let's search for reader. Experimental accessibility okay, language. Okay, good. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Wow. So they, now it, they gone it from 104 to 105. Type in M104. And M then turn temporarily that... Temporarily unexpire flags expired as of M104. These flags will be removed soon anyway. 
So and enable that one. Enable temporarily and then relaunch. Relaunch and now reader should be here. Now right? let's check if reader is there. Da -da -da! Okay, so boy, that's we'll go through that. That's absurd. That is absurd. That's absurd. Ba -da -da -ba -da -boop. <sighs> Just use Edge. <laughs> Do you use Edge? I use Safari. On on Windows? Oh, on Windows. Oh, you're oh, on a Mac on Windows, now. That's I use right. Firefox. I thought you were on Evis. On Windows, I use Firefox. Yeah, me too. I, I use Firefox Edge everywhere, there even, on, to, even on Mac, I use Firefox. Firefox is my, if it's not working in Safari, I go to Firefox on Mac, and yeah. then on Windows, it's just Firefox, and then occasionally I'll use I Edge. feel that supporting Safari is as good as, the only reason I, well, I like Safari. I just use it because also, it's so good between devices. That's yeah. the only reason. Yeah, yeah, the syncing, yeah, yeah. So that's why I use it everywhere, because... Um, yeah, Firefox's syncing is great too. Yeah, I saw the optical line judges at the U.S. Open, oh, but yeah, then they give right. them human voices, and they have a variety of voices depending on how close it was. That's hysterical. That's what Burke was telling me. Out, out. Uh, <laughs> it could be out, maybe out, out. <laughs> I wonder if I could find line judge voices. Oh, that'd be fun to add. Yeah. Our show today brought to you by UserWay. So is our website, by the way. If you go to twit.tv, down in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see the uh, the universal uh, accessibility symbol. Click that. You'll see a host of features for people who with dyslexia, people who have vision issues, people who need a high-contrast display. It's actually really cool. And we did that with one line of JavaScript. UserWay.org. The law in the U.S. is... Because of the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, every website has to be acceptable. No exceptions. Accessible. No exceptions. UserWay's incredible AI-powered solution does it for us. They, it enforces the hundreds, and they are constantly changing, of the WCAG guidelines. That's the Web Com Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG. In, and they can do it in a matter of seconds. It'll do it. UserWay's AI can achieve more than an entire team of developers can in months. I know if you're, you know, if you have a website, it's a little challenging, you know, small business. What do I have to do to make it accessible? But I have to say, it does not need to be overwhelming. Userway solutions make it simple, it's easy, and yes, it's cost effective. Start by going to userway.org slash twit and take a look uh, with their scanning tool. That's free. You could see how much in compliance you are or how little. That's important. Find out where you stand. And if, and if, you need UserWay, you will be very pleased. As little as $49 a month. Plus, we're going to get you 30% off. So that makes it even more affordable. It's less than we pay for one web font, basically. And by the way, yes, they have enterprise-grade tools, too. If you have a site with thousands of web pages, UserWay has a managed solution. Their team will handle everything for you. In fact, UserWay is the number one Web accessibility solutions, 61% market share, over a million sites use UserWay, including some of the biggest sites in the world, Coca-Cola, Disney, eBay, FedEx, many other leading brands. And now you can use the same technology that these leading brands use uh, for a very, very affordable price. So, userway.org slash twit. Don't forget, use userway.org slash twit. You'll get 30% off. Yes, it's the law, and I say that, but it's also something you, you need to do because you don't want to leave that market out. There's a billion people with disabilities in the world. UserWay does it all for you. Just ask Susan Bennett, the voice of Siri, what she thinks of UserWay. Hi, I'm Susan Bennett, the original voice of Siri. You won't hear me say something like this too often. I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're looking for. But every day... That's what the Internet is like for millions of people with disabilities. UserWay fixes all of that with just one line of code. Let it fix it for you. UserWay can make your website, any website, fully accessible and ADA compliant. With UserWay, everyone who visits your site can browse seamlessly, can customize it to fit their needs. And it's a great way to showcase your brand's commitment to millions of people with disabilities. I know you want to do this. Go to userway.org slash twit. Get 30% off UserWay's AI-powered accessibility solution. Just book a short call. Get all the deets. Get the accessibility guide. UserWay. Making the internet accessible for everyone. userway.org slash twit. We thank them so much for their support and for making the web accessible. 
Now back to the Tech Guy program. What is hip? I'll tell you, man. This cat right here, he blows a hip horn. He is Scott Wilkins, if you consider the tuba a hip horn. Actually, you blow a trumpet, right? Well, I don't play much trumpet. Uh, no. If trombone lower, is... Lower than... Trombone is a, a hip horn. A little bit hip. It's super uh, hip. Uh, wah, wah. Tuba is super hip, man. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Wilkinson, he is not merely a horn man. He is the home theater geek. <laughs> Joins us every week to talk about home theater. We... I, Next time we were talking about the screen that they use at the Steve Jobs Theater. Yeah, I'm interested to know what kind that is. We're gonna yes, somehow I'm going to ask someone sneak back in. <laughs> this is the kind I of thing that would if I it's would a micro do LED. that would get me blocked. <laughs> I, right, right. I almost went over to the control place and took some photos, but then I thought, yeah, maybe no. not on my first visit. Yeah. To the <laughs> maybe not your first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I would, you would think I they'd use be the best. If it's micro, micro LED. Yeah, micro, especially is, if it was really big. Right? It's I mean, pretty it big. It's sort huge. Of jumbotron size almost. And Apple could afford that. What was Samsung's super screen? Oh, they could million afford bucks. that. Yeah, sure. It's nothing. Jump change. Yeah. No, but yeah, really. Every <laughs> seat in that theater look cost, at my couch. cost they were fourteen thousand so dollars. What? Oh, so man. uncomfortable. But they look. Good. I kept having to move. But they look good. Really? They look great. They're like this nice Johnny brown Ive, leather. Yeah, Johnny Ive designed them. It's the same leather used in. Uh, Somebody's executive jet. I can't remember who. Oh, yeah. I thought there'd be a college desk leather. going on too. <laughs> a sort of fold up desk. That I could There's no desk, but there are know. plugs, right? There weren't even plugs. There weren't any USB. Apparently, in the back, if you sit in the back row, there are. But where we were sitting, there were oh, not. Oh, man. I know. I thought, wait, hold on. Am I in the right place? Yeah. <laughs> in the Apple world, form follows form. <laughs> follows form. Scott Wilkinson, yeah. what's new in the world of audio visual? Oh, well, I've got a, a, a nice, easy, supposedly, question from um, uh, the Cubsman. The Cubsman. Right. The Cubsman, who might be a Cubs fan, who knows. His wife and his wife and he are TV shopping, and they're, they were excited to get the Sony A80K 77-inch OLED, which is a 2022 model, red, nice. standard beautiful OLED, yeah. beautiful TV. Yeah. But then he wonders, should I be looking at the QD OLED? Which the is A95K. Theoretically better, right? Theoretically, oh. yes. Well, there, there, I, I took a look at this, and there are some interesting things to think about. For one thing, the uh, OLED, regular OLED, is quite a bit less expensive. He can get a 77-inch uh, OLED for, um, I think it was 3000 bucks. Um, and how and much the is six, the QLED? The Q, QD, QD OLED, OLED yeah. doesn't come in 77. It only comes in up to 65. Oh, and on, peasant on size. the Sony... Peasant I know, size. I know. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And on the, okay. on the Sony website... We're not animals. <laughs> <laughs> they, the, the 65 on the Sony website is discounted to 3500 bucks. It's normally 4000 Yeah, so it's a lot more expensive. So it's a lot more expensive for and a much smaller, smaller size. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, I went and I went... I did one step further. I went to artings.com, artings.com. T I N G S dot com, which is a great TV review website. And they do a lot of comparisons, and they have a comparison of the A95K and the A80K. And they uh, obviously they love the QD OLED, the new QD OLED, which everybody loves, but they they made mention of something that I had not heard before, which is if it's in a bright room, you got a lot of ambient light in the room, the black level that that is that's famous OLED is famous for having a zero black level, really super deep blacks, rises. It actually comes up. There must be some sort of ambient light sensor. So they're brightening in, the screen so you can see. They're brightening see it. the screen. Yes, but you're also bright bringing up the black level, which you shouldn't do. And the OLED does not do that. The standard OLED. Oh, that's does interesting. Not do that. So it sounds like you've come up with some very good reasons not to spend the extra thousand bucks. Uh, if if you're going to put this TV in a room where a, a fair amount of time you're going to spend watching with mm -hmm. all the lights on, mm -hmm. 
I would say maybe not. Now, it is brighter. The the QD OLED is like a couple couple hundred nits brighter than the standard OLED. So that compensates for the brightness in the room, but man, I wish it did not raise the black level at the same time. So it's it's not quite as easy a question as I thought it was going to be when I first started looking into it. You know, I thought, oh, obviously the QD OLED. Well, except if you want a bigger picture. Right. You know, if you want that 77 inch, then the the regular OLED's the only way to go. Yeah. Um, and it's not going to be quite as bright, but it's also not going to bring up that black level, which to me is really important. I, it's critical for contrast. Now that's contrast. probably unique to Sony's panel, right? I, Correct. The the Samsung panel doesn't do it according uh, to Artings. Okay. Out Boy, good on, on Artings for catching that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. I hadn't seen that anywhere else. I had, I didn't hear about it from the uh, flat panel shootout, the Value Electronics flat panel shootout that was uh, a couple months ago. Um, I didn't hear it anywhere else, but Artings uh, brings it up and makes sure you know this is something that happens, hmm. just so that you're informed. Hmm. Hmm. So that's that's an important so thing. I so I guess the uh, recommendation is get this Sony plain old OLED, the 77-inch. Save money. If you want that, get a nice Save screen. money. Get a bigger screen. Don't have the uh, the raising black level. That uh, sounds like something that room. is in the firmware. Could be. Could very well be. I'm shocked if Sony in the QD OLED did not provide a control yeah. that turns off the ambient light sensor. Yeah. And our things would have found it. Right. For sure. And they would have said something about it. They would have said, right. oh, yeah, just go in here to this menu item and turn this off, and you've solved the problem. But right. apparently not. And that's shocking to me. Yeah. And that is a firmware thing. You could you could add that, I'm sure. Yeah. There's there's no reason why you would, wouldn't be able to do that. Very good. We've solved anyway, that mystery. There you go. It was so weird. Um, but for the larger screen, yeah, absolutely. The, uh, the Sony OLED or the LG C2. Uh, that comes in a 77 inch as well. Uh, Sony hat probably has better video processing overall, generally speaking. Oh, interesting. So, okay. So, but they're more. There's expensive. so much to consider with all with it. With I all this. know. So there's so many variables. Yep. Afraid so. Is processing important if you're watching a native 4K HDR? Stream. I know we use processing for upscaling from 1080p, right? Or, or Which, lower. if you're watching, if you're watching any kind of broadcast TV, then uh, you're you do care about upscaling. But if you're only you watching high quality, only watching 4K, high quality streaming, then it's it's important for things like motion processing and stuff like that. So but there's not still for upscaling. there's still some going on. There's still something for the okay. TV, the processor to do. Well, now we have to get even more granular in our reviews. <laughs> and talk about you know, I mean, may, you know, for all we know, the Sony processing's fine on 4K HDR. It's just not for broadcast or something like right, that, right? Right, right. The other thing to keep in mind, of course, is that Sony supports right, Dolby Samsung. Vision. Right, and that's Samsung important. Does not that we I know think is that's important. really important. Yes, yeah. Dolby Vision is the more common standard for high dynamic range. Much more common, and much. More it's common. not necessarily better. It's just that a lot of the content, like on Disney Plus, for instance. You won't get it's HDR. It's all in Dolby Vision. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Unless you have Dolby Vision, right? Right. You have solved exactly it all. So. What's uh, what's uh, your podcast about this week? YouTube.com slash AVS Forum. Oh, yeah, we just uh, we just did a whole hour and a half on the UST projector shootout. Remember I talked oh, yeah, about yeah. that a couple the weeks ago. Short throw projectors. Show. Short throw projectors. Uh, had a great discussion with the people in who were in charge of that shootout. Uh, they did two of them. They did one with a single laser and one with triple laser. It's a very deep discussion. Really cool. You should go check it out. Scott Wilkinson, Home Theater Geek, youtube.com slash AVS Forum and every week right here. Leo and Micah, more coming up. Meow, meow, meow. So, I guess it's time for the Scott Wilkinson show. <laughs> Let me put you in the... In right, thank scrying. you so much. By the way, ne next week, during the week, I'm going down to, I'm getting some sort of special press tour with a few journalists, hopefully real journalists. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, of the Harmon 
uh, <laughs> campus. Harmon is now owned by Samsung, but they're going to be introducing some new stuff for Cedia, which is coming up uh, end of September. I'm not going to Cedia for the first time in must be 20, 25 years. Wow. Um, Why not? Well, two reasons. One is it's in the middle of the Jewish high holidays and just before Yom Kippur. And I'm involved. I'm going down to L.A. to uh, be involved in a program for that. And somebody's got to, that shofar is not going to play itself. Somebody's got to blow that shofar. That's right. That's exactly right. And so going to Cedia and racing back in time to do that. Uh, no. And I must admit, I'm still a little uncomfortable with at the thought of going to a trade show with a bunch of people. Mm hmm. For I several tested days. this morning, by the way, Micah. So don't oh, same, don't same. worry. I'll, I'm not. Oh, good, good. Yeah, oh yeah, I, yeah, Micah, you were in a thousand. And Micah, well, you were in a concert. Was in Steve Jobs' uh, concert. Yeah, yeah Steve yeah. Jobs' concert, <laughs> Motley Crue concert. Mm -hmm. Mine was outside. At least you were indoors. I was, I was really surprised Apple did that. Yeah, yeah. But you yeah. wore a mask the whole time. Wore a mask the good whole man. time I was indoors. While you were indoors. Yeah. See, I would do that at Cedia too, but I've heard so many stories yeah, of people even who are still. fully vaccinated and fully boosted and wearing masks. You know what it is? It's the airplane in the airport, I'm convinced. I think so. I too. hear so many people getting sick from the flight. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We so, don't we still don't know where we're I still we think ride it. sharing can be a sure bad you're in a car to, with somebody. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. So anyway, that's that's the other reason I'm not going to Cedia. Yeah, I understand. Um so uh, but I am going to go down to, to Harmon. I'm flying down to L.A. It's only an hour flight, you know, and uh, go spend a little time with the Harmon people. And hopefully, if it's not under embargo, can be able to come back next week and talk about that. Good. Nice. I think increasingly it's less important to go to these events, to be honest with you. Oh, I agree. I I'm agree. making I'm making you know apple juice out of out of lemons, but I <laughs> I, uh, I can't I don't go, and so you know, and I feel like I get you know I'm never going to do CES. You get again. the information. Oh, God. The, yeah. CES. That was what it's I've... just a nightmare. All of these oh. things, right? Well, yes, it is. <laughs> However, I will say on the positive side that for me, the value of going to CES or Cedia is actual FaceTime with people that I normally don't get to see. Right, I don't so care. So, you know, they're my friends in the industry. Right, and, I have and no friends. being able to hang out with them. <laughs> yeah, that's What's the that? I have no friends, so that's the difference. I have no friends, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, there you go. And Micah, do you feel like the hands-on thing at the Apple thing was I think it can worth be. Worth it? Yeah, I... I I it was pretty brief, though, right? It was very brief. Um, I it all depends. Like hindsight, this was my first time. I think that uh, in the in the future, I could get more value out of those moments, knowing where, knowing what to do, knowing what to do, get those by, elbows by out. elbowing your Having way past people, yeah, that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. yeah, wearing a helmet and <laughs> elbow pads, right? Yeah, right, right, and tackling people. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Good lord. Yeah, I, 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 Mike, I was listening to your comments about journalism, and I couldn't agree more. And the the whoever it was, Leo, I think you mentioned, you know, said, well, we got to spend a few moments with this device and here's our thoughts on yeah, it. Yeah, I couldn't. Ari's got a 1500 word article out of it. It's like, come oh, on, man. man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And exactly. I like ours, but I, I don't think it's their fault. I think there's just so much pressure. Yeah. Exactly. And you work with what you, you have got. to write that article because mm -hmm. everybody else is. And, writing and that you have to put it up, you know, within moments of right. the event. Right. Which is why they're that's, running. That's the back. pressure I really don't like about online. I like a I like lot of things about, about online publishing, but that's yeah. not one of them. So yeah. I like about what we do is that it didn't feel so urgent. That was kind of nice. Now this is singing. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> Uh, Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guys. We've done some research. We even tried it out. There is a way to get reader mode back yes. temporarily in Chrome 105. Mm -hmm. It's a little involved, but there's a flag called temporarily unexpire M104 flags. <laughs> so I launched Chrome 104 on my Mac, and I had the flag that said reader, turn, you know, turn yeah. on. And then I noticed I didn't have the, uh, the 105, version, so yeah. I said update, and it was gone. It went away. Reader mode was gone. So they really have taken it out. Mm -hmm. So by looking up that temporarily unexpired M104 flags, which you can just type in M104 and find it very easily, you enable that, and then it tells you to relaunch Chrome. You relaunch Chrome, and reader mode is back. So, temporarily, though. Temporarily. They, they, they say, you know, okay, we're just going to give you a little break here. Mm -hmm. Reader mode is still in Edge. 
and other Chromium-based browsers. So something you should know, Google's Chrome is based on an open source platform written by Googlers, but it's open source called Chromium. And there are many, many other, this is Google's secret way of taking over the world. By the way, I am more and more interpreting every move by Google as a way to take over the world. Maybe I'm just getting cynical, but by releasing Chromium open source, even though they wrote it, mm -hmm. they're encouraging other companies to use it as the base for their browsers because eventually I think they want to make a monoculture. Every browser it's uses Chromium. Chromium. Wow. And at that point, when and because when they make changes, things like taking Reader out, you know, they can kind of push it through the whole Subtly ecosystem. So shifts. right now, Third-party browsers that use Chromium, Brave, Vivaldi, and Microsoft's Edge browser seem to still have that reader mode. But I wonder. And, of course, again, and, I, and I'll freely admit this, I'm being cynical. Google makes its money in ads, and yeah. reader mode takes out the ads. Uh, I like reader mode for that reason. I think that's why we like reader mode. It makes it easier to read what you're actually there to read. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm not surprised Google's taking it out since they are almost 100% funded by their ad business. Um, yeah. But I hope that other Chromium browsers will keep it in. Or and I guess they'll have to develop their own. I, yeah, Safari, which is option. not based on Chromium, which is based on WebKit, Apple's Safari does have a reader mode. In fact, they aggressively push it, which yeah. is great. In fact, they'll even say when you go to a site, oh, you can see this in reader mode. You want to see it in reader mode? <laughs> Try it in reader <laughs> mode. You'll love it. So there's the answer to uh, the question 45 minutes later. Lewis is on the line <laughs> from Hollywood, California. Hi, Lewis. Leo and Micah, Mr. your tickets. President. Hello, Mr. Lewis. Leo and Micah, greetings from Hollywood, California, where the current temperature is 80 degrees and Perfect. the humidity is 630. <laughs> <laughs> well, wouldn't you rather have that than 104? I, I suppose. Oh, definitely. Yes. Um, first, Leo, I owe an enormous apology to Ms. Schaefer. Uh, my humidity-addled brain went back in time for a moment, and I addressed Kim as Heather. Kim, wow. I do that all the time. <laughs> accept my sincere apology. I know who you are. Blame it on humidity-induced brain fever. All right. Kim forgives you, right, Kim? I didn't even hear him say that, so oh, that apology you, was completely you, unnecessary. You busted yourself for maybe, no reason. Maybe the humidity from this week got to my head too because <laughs> it was hot this was week up hot. even up here in northern california it was miserable so hot yeah oh Leo and Micah, I'm looking for a hardware recommendation that'll work with both Mac and iPhone. And if Scott has any thoughts on this, so much the better. I'd like a recommendation for wireless HDMI. My uh, now I haven't tried it lately. But my experience with wireless HDMI has been abysmal. Yeah, that's, that was that heavy sigh I um, did. <laughs> Scott, do you have any experience with wireless HDMI? I'm, I'm afraid my experience is the same as yours. Yeah. Abysmal. You, yeah. Um, who is it that makes those? Is it something that begins with a W that makes the uh, wireless um, um, video? Uh, wireless there, and, it's, and it's kind of, if you, if you look at it. <laughs> I know DVDO used to. Yeah. Um, the the wire cutter has a review of the best, you know. And, and I do you trust wire cutter? I trust. Wire I, I definitely trust wire I cutter. Do. But Lewis, I'd I love do. it if you could maybe tell us what you're trying to do as opposed so to. You're, so uh, while traveling, if you're in a hotel room where the television has uh, an HDMI input, or you're at a friend's house, you don't want to have to carry around a 20 foot long braided cable to connect your iPhone or your MacBook to the television. So I was looking for... Well, but remember, computer. you now have to connect the base station for the wireless HDMI to the television. Well, but it, then it's just... The, uh, some of them are really small. Some of them are... Okay. Dub, uh, have, uh, you know, double antenna. That's um, a, I mean, I like that. More and more hotels, I have to say, I'm seeing more and more hotels where it just says log into your Netflix or or or, or cast to it. And I love mm -hmm. that. I have to say, I'm yeah. really enjoying it. I was going to say, cast yeah. to it. Have you considered, instead of getting a wireless HDMI, instead getting an Apple TV and using that? You can plug that into the TV. Uh, can you travel with a, with a, an Apple TV yeah. connected to the 
hotel or yes uh, the in hotel fact they've uh, they've recently updated uh, TVOS to be able to work perfectly with captive uh, Wi-Fi login oh, nice so it's no issue to be able to log in using an Apple TV and th- in that way you're using airplay instead and airplay my experience with that is not a business much better, <laughs> much better. Well, totally agree. I've, I've got Apple TV I have no problem uh, back th- those are small th- in fact yeah. smaller than HDMI so I'll tell you what the what the wire cutter uh, says they say uh, sometimes it's not convenient to run HDMI cables a wireless transmitter solves that problem allowing you to blah 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 a good wired setup will always be more reliable, but if you need a wireless transmission, we recommend the Nereus Aries Home Plus. N Y R I U S A R I E S. It's two hundred fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. It says it reliably sends ten eighty p. That's another issue with it. You're not going to get four K, uh, which you would well, get with an Apple TV. TV. Isn't going to be four K. Oh, I beg to differ. You're staying in really? some low down hotels, I guess. Yeah, more and more hotels actually have decent TVs. You're right. For a long oh. time, you'd get a 42-inch 720p TV right, in right, the hotel. Right. But uh, no, I'm more and more seeing 4K TVs in the uh, Okay, the all right, yeah. good. Uh, but this is 1080p, 7.1 channel wireless audio. I, you know, if you want to bring seven, eight, nine speakers with you, go, <laughs> go, go, go through it. Goes through walls up to 100 feet away, loaded with helpful features. 250 bucks is pricey. It's more than mm-hmm. the less expensive runner-up. More than an Apple TV. Yeah. yeah, good point. Yeah. Uh, one more recommendation, very quickly, a software one. Do you have a recommendation for um, Mac for uh, a uh, application that will seek out and help you sort through duplicate images? Oh, hands down, it's an app called Gemini. Gemini. Gemini 2. It is, oh yeah, it's on Gemini 2, that's right. <laughs> Not uh, free, but really good. Yeah, so if you're looking for free... It's a subscription, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, Mac Paul uh, makes a lot of great apps, but Gemini 2, it, it will work with photos and also files, so you kind of get a two-for-one there if you also want to do that. But what's great about Gemini 2 is that along with doing literal duplicates, it will also show you groupings of photos that are very similar, maybe when you you know held down the shutter button to try to get capture something that looks good uh, and can help you sort through those as well. But yes, anytime anyone asks me, how can I sort through my duplicates, Gemini 2 is what I choose. But I will say that uh, stay posted because when Ventura rolls out, uh, Apple has actually improved the built-in duplicate oh. detection for photos good. in, in good. Ventura. So if you can hold out, you might try that first okay. and then go to Gemini 2 if you need some more help. $20 that. a year. Uh, uh, for one Mac, and then they have multiple Mac subscriptions. Uh, and because MacPaw is in Ukraine, you might think of it as a charitable contribution yeah. in some ways, you know, to support the uh, Ukraine people. Thank uh, you, gentlemen. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Louis. All right, you too. Yeah. Just uh, what do you do with humidity? What do you what do you, what can you do with humidity? Just uh, throw a bucket of water over your head, embrace it. I guess it's uh, you have to have, like have a dehumidifier. You know, because you're from Missouri. Yeah, you've lived in that environment. AC natural well by AC default does, is a yeah. dehumidifying process. Yeah, so yeah, if you've got yeah. AC, that's the, the way to help. But um, heat will also dry the house out. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. Maybe not. But if it's the hot, solution. Then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 8888 ask leo is the phone number website techguylabs.com we'll put a link to the uh, gemini 2 deduper on the website more calls right after this <laughs> yeah but don't leave your apple tv in the hotel yeah don't leave it behind. Oy, yay, 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 yay. you would be sorry if you do that oh man especially at the bates motel because you know Norman can yeah. be a little sticky. <laughs> a little sticky fingered. About the whole thing, yes. Yes, indeed. <sighs> All yours, Scott, uh, while Micah and I enjoy a fine beverage. Please mm. do. Yes. Mmm, beverage. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Bravo. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Excellent, Homer Simpson. <laughs> Don't. Don't. Okay. Hello, everybody. So nice to see you all here, as always. Finally, the heat has broken. It is humid up here in Santa Cruz as well. But, man, coastal town of Santa Cruz got to the mid-90s last week, which is very rare. Very rare. And up in the hills, easily into the 105, 110 range. And that's just a few miles away from here. 
Hey, loquacious. Always great to see you here. Um, let's see. Twisted Mister says, OLEDs dim when there's a static image displayed for long periods of time. It's to protect the panel. Generally, that's true. Um, but this raising of the black level, I, I don't think there's a need to do that. And there should be a way to turn it off. So I'm... I'm kind of bummed about that. Now, I will tell you this. I have a first-generation Sony OLED, A1E, um, and I don't see any evidence of screen burn-in. Now, I don't leave a static image on it all for long periods of time, and I don't watch, I don't keep the news channels on it for days at a time with the uh, scrolling uh, ticker at the bottom. Uh, and I don't play video games on it, so there's no scoreboards sitting there in one place. But I have seen no evidence of screen burn-in on that OLED in now some number of years. Uh, when when did the A1E come out? Uh, <clears throat> user 7998, how do you turn off the auto dimming on the OLED? Well, there may be a control in the uh, picture menu. To, to do that. Some will probably offer it, some won't. Um, uh, Mike Mon, how you doing, man? Uh, how about putting a piece of black tape over that light sensor? Hey, you know what? That's a low-tech but great idea for the, uh, for the Sony A95K QD OLED to prevent it from raising the black level in in high ambient light situations. I like that. I like that. Simple, probably effective. I would certainly want to try it. Uh, let's see. Gumby, recommendation on a good set of under $200 over the year travel wireless wired headphones. Collapse small like the Beats. I'm looking at the uh, ATM M50, AT ATH, sorry. Um, that's a good question. Um, I think the Sonys are more than that. Let me double check. They're the... I, I really like the Sonys for for traveling. That's what I use. It's the Sony WM-X1000. That's what it is. Um... WH-1000XM4, that's what it is. Oh, yeah, they're 350 bucks. So that's more than you want to spend, which is too bad because they're really, really good. Um, uh, let's see. What was the one you were looking at? You were looking at the ATH-M50. Let me look that up real quick. Uh, ATH, was it? I'm, uh, Damn. Sorry about that, folks. Let me just see here. What was it you were looking at? ATHM50. Let me try to remember that. ATH-M50. Who makes that one? I've forgotten. Audio Technica, of course. Silly me. Um, yeah, well, Audio Technica headphones are great. I have no problem with those at all. If they're wireless, if, if what you need is wireless... Uh, then, then sure, absolutely. Um, I really like the Sony's, but they're too expensive. Oh, you know what? You could, if you could get like the XM3, the third generation, uh, they might be priced more in the two hundred dollar range. Um. Let's see, WH, WH-1000 XM3. Um, yeah, there's, there's one on eBay for 114 bucks. There's one on eBay for 400 bucks. And there's another one on eBay for 219, 220 bucks. So um, that's actually what I have. I have the XM3s, which are now a couple generations old. But, man, they just sound great. They fold up nice. Noise cancellation is excellent. Um, so I, I would consider finding a good used pair of those. Um, 
Let's see here. Oh, user 8680 says, here's Sony's official method to turn off auto brightness. Oh, okay. I'll have to look at that. Uh, looking for at criteria for large 4K TV, 65 inch plus. This is Doug M. Wall mounted that can best double as a Mac monitor on the wall. Um, I guess I guess an OLED would, would be good at that. I, I don't have much experience using TVs as computer monitors. Um, so I wouldn't really have a lot of good things to say about that. I mean, informative things. Uh, I know I know people who do. Mike Mann in the chat room uh, uses one for a coloring monitor uh, in his uh, coloring work, but that's not exactly what you have in mind either. How, my main question would be, how good is the text? Is the text crisp and clean and you'd want a 4k for that i'm i'm sure and i would guess an oled would probably be a really good thing uh hey Mez, is what's the visual cues of the black level is raised well black doesn't look black it looks dark gray and according to our tings it also takes on a kind of a purplish hue um Beatmaster is, is going back to the headphone question. Sennheiser, also a good, very good make. Um, and you could probably find a, a good set in the $200 range there. Um, Gumby says the fourth generation of the Sonys are closer to $200 too. Sure. So if you can get the fourth generation, then yeah, absolutely. I just love my Sonys. I, that's what I use on flights and even when I'm watching TV at home on the headphones when Joanna doesn't want to be disturbed, uh, that's what I use. Mike Mann says the LG OLED works great as a computer monitor. Well, there you go. I would trust him. Take his advice. You could get the 48-inch. Um, or if you wanted to get bigger, you'd get bigger. Absolutely. Six minutes past the hour. We're coming up. See, Doug M says, uh, just trying to determine criteria for choosing one. Look at text. Not much room on the desk with 32 inch monitor, so LG OLED it is, yay! If it's gonna be on the wall right behind your desk, I imagine a 48 would be fine. The four x four x four LED cube behind me, uh, Jason NH is uh, called a hypercube. It was a gift actually. But you Mr. Wilkinson, thank you. My pleasure, Have See a you next wonderful week. week. Thanks, you too. It's time to talk tech. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent. Hello. Um, we're both wearing black, uh, as is appropriate. Yes. Because this was a sad oh. uh, week R right? Uh, in history. Mm -hmm. um, but also, because of the queen I'm talking about, but also uh, we are also a little happy inside because Apple. We're a little happy inside, but we can't show it because we're journalists. Oh, wait. I just showed it. Oh, <laughs> no jiggling. <laughs> it's Monday. Uh, iOS 16 comes out. So get ready. All yes. your phones. I did see one bank. Ironically, a bank that serves the British royalty, a very fancy personal bank in the UK, tell its customers, please do not upgrade to iOS 16. Oh, our app will not work. Oh, Lord. Uh, and here's how to stop that. Now, I have to say, if you have to not upgrade your operating system because of a bank's... Get a new bank? Junk, yes. <laughs> Please. Yes. That's terrible. Please don't install the latest we security We don't want you to updates. be secure. Just compatible. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Fine. 8888 asked you. I'm sure most apps will continue to work. I don't know what it would be in iOS 16 that might yeah, break I don't, things. That, that sounds more like a, we don't want to deal with troubleshooting that could come up. Rather too much than... trouble. We're too busy managing your money. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Uh, I think we've covered the Apple event in, in all 
the detail we needed to. A Google event is coming up uh, October 9th. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we know work. already because Google already said what they're going to do with it. The new Pixel 7 and I presume 7 XL to replace their Pixel 6. Those Pixel phones are nice. They don't sell very well. They they don't compete with uh, Samsung and the Android space very well. But uh, I always think they're nice hardware. I like to have them. I, I'm rocking this Pixel 6 that I've had since it's a nice phone. day one. Yeah, it's a, it's a great phone. And a uh, new Pixel Watch. Google's yeah. never done a watch. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. Google owns Fitbit. Uh, I, you know, they're so far behind Apple, which is now in its eighth generation watch, uh, at Google's first generation watch. I don't know. Uh, especially since Apple's doing this ultra sport watch, which really is out to compete with not Garmin. just, not Fitbit, but Garmin, the high end. And I was surprised. I was actually very pleased that Apple, you know, Garmin's watches are more like a thousand dollars. Apple, uh, it was speculated would cost uh, the Apple Ultra would cost a thousand bucks, only eight hundred, only only a mere eight, only eight hundred dollars. Well, but for the size, in of comparison, it, it's a good deal. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I'm really, I don't know. I'm gonna, I, I order it because we, we should, we should look oh, at absolutely. it. Oh, absolutely. I'm thinking it might be even for me, just a little too. I big. don't know. And once you get it on your wrist, you, you you felt comfortable, right? Yeah, I mean, I like I said, having it on my wrist, it certainly looked huge. I've got these tiny little wrists, so that's part of the problem. But it didn't feel big. Yeah. And so, if you can get past the looks, the functionality that it provides is so much more. It's a style thing too. Yeah. I mean, nowadays, big watches. Big watches are. I think actually, I think big watches have kind of always been in. Yeah, it was weird because it was uh, for a while. It was. The status symbol was the smallest possible phone and the biggest possible watch. <laughs> yeah. That's changed a little bit over the years. Uh, all right, let's go back to the phones. 8888, ask Leo. Kathy's on the line from Los Angeles. Hello, Kathy. Hi, how are you? We're great. How are you? I am fine. I'm cooled off a little bit. The humidity Ooh. was terrible. You could cut Ooh. it with a uh, knife. It was bad anyway. over the week, but now it's humid. So, geez, you can't win. Can't I know. win for losing. I know. But <sighs> anyway, I have a question. I have looked and looked and researched, and I couldn't find anything easy. Easy, keyword easy. I need to take my text from my phone and print them out for court. Um. And I can't find an easy way to do that. What kind of phone do you have? Email. What kind of phone do you have? Uh, I have a, a, a Android. Answer is very specific to the phone. Uh, so uh, on an Android phone, do you have a Windows computer? Uh, I know. Do you have any computer? Well, maybe my work one might be. I have an Acer laptop. Oh, that's a Windows computer at work. Yeah, you need you need to hook it up to a computer to print these messages. A computer and a obviously a a printer. <laughs> right. Put uh, my phone up to the computer. Yeah. Um, so there are a number of apps that you can buy uh, that will back up your text messages to your computer, and then you can easily print them from your computer. Uh, they're in the Google Play Store. I don't have a lot of experience with any of them, so I don't know which one to recommend. I'm looking at some websites. In fact, yeah. I've got a website. I Pris looked at them, but I didn't, yeah, I didn't know either um, which to choose from. Yeah, Droid I Transfer is asking. one. Yeah, a lot of the backup programs will do this. Super Backup will do it, because they'll back up your messages as text, and then you open the file where the messages are, and you, you can print them out uh, individually. Does court want you to have a date and time on them? Um, they haven't said, but I have a, I think I have dates on them, you know, like how you see the day you send them. Yeah. I don't know about time. Yeah. Um, it's just a small claims court, but it's all. I'm, no, yeah, it's so evidence. I'm, I understand. I'm right, but I, I have right, <laughs> but that's my evidence. Well, it's, yeah, Judge Judy's going to need to see some evidence here. So you, you <laughs> got it. It's not documented. If it's not documented, it never happened. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So uh, there are programs that'll do it. Uh, a number of them. I'll put. We'll just put a link in the show notes. I don't have any experience with any of these chat room. Do you have any experience uh, with these? The other thing you could do is uh, somebody's saying is you could email the texts to your Acer at work, you know, to your work address and print them there. Yeah, but that I would. Have be like ten, but I have tons of them. Like months oh, worth, okay. Worth, and okay. That's why I said the keyword was easy. Like just I want to take like yeah, yeah, because probably for court evidence. That's why I'm asking about the date and time. You know, that's on the message. I don't know. If you did a screenshot on your phone, 
that might be from an evidentiary point of view, and it really depends on the court and the judge and all that, but it might be better because it's... Well, you then you have to print the screenshot. You could print the screenshot. That's much easier. Yeah. But it's but if you have hundreds of messages, opening each one and going clank, clank, clank is a pain in the behind. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's like um, not hundreds, but I have to like uh, separate like what's, what's relevant and what's not. Yeah. You know, like, like July 3rd, I may have like a uh, whole conversation and then I may have a little unrelevant one like july 5th yeah yeah you probably don't. screenshot sounds like a lot of work i have used it i would recommend it sms backup plus okay which backs up your sms uh messages which you can then uh transfer to gmail for instance what it what it okay. does is it uh and that's actually is kind of cool you back up the messages you can also do your call history if that's relevant uh into your gmail or your google calendar uh, and then oh. you could print it out from Gmail or your Google Calendar, which I think is probably the e I mean, since you want ease, that's probably the easiest way to do it. And I have used that you know, program. I'm old. I'm old. You know, I'm not tech. You know, me like, too. I'm old too. You know, like, uh, well, yeah, I know you're you're three years older than me, but um, so if you're <laughs> old, I, I I'm really old. You know that <laughs> that blue that blue box and PowerPoints. I call. It, I have a name for that blue box. Her name's Betty something blue. I, you know, I can't do that. Every time I get everything right, I click on it, it goes all Hayward. So. <laughs> I am with you 100%. I know how you feel. So try that. It's in the Google Play Store. It's also free and open source. So Yeah. And okay, because so it's free and open source, I can recommend it, uh, you know, as being safe. Yeah, SMS plus. Ba backup SMS? plus. SMS backup plus. Okay. We've got a place right, where you can find. We need to call you for that. weeks. <laughs> Good. And well, yes, where will we put that link, Micah Sargent? We will Sargent? put that link at techguylabs.com. So if you head there after the show, you'll be able to find it if you do lose it. And, SMS and guess plus. what? Our advertisers what? are so generous on this radio show that we don't even have to charge you for a visit to that website. We don't make you sign up. We don't make yeah. you do anything. We we might okay. show you an ad. I don't know if there's an ad there. but uh, no, no. If What happens if I'm trying it and I can't get it to work? What do, I do? Is there, do I go to the chat room and ask somebody? Something? Yeah, you could do that or you can call back. I think you'll be able to figure it out. I think it's pretty okay. straightforward because it's designed to, ba it says SMS, that's the text messages, backup. Right. It's designed to do exactly okay. what you want. And then once it's what backed up, okay. yeah, yeah. I don't think it's going to be hard for you to use. Watch out for the okay, blue box, good. though. Yeah, <laughs> Betty blue box. Yeah, uh, Betty. Yeah, you can figure out what the B word. Betty blank blue box. <laughs> okay. I hey, it, I'm, right. I'm glad you like in two seconds. I'm glad you got in, Kathy. I I am too. Thank you so much. You guys have a good day. I you love too. You. Call back anytime. She says she's old and she's younger than me. Uh oh. Uh oh. We well, do. This is why Mike is here to give us a little. It's like a coat of new paint. <laughs> Uh, a little, a little refresher. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. That's the phone number. Uh, you could dial eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo and Micah. Mm -hmm. That works. It we works. It. It's a lot of numbers. So, so. <laughs> Just think, Micah's understood. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, in, it's implied. More calls right after this. He's drinking that. <laughs> it isn't the most attractive jar. It is not. But it's That's actually sort of a cloudy. It's a beverage. It's a beverage. It's a it's a commercial beverage that he that is in our snack cupboard. So the snack cupboard. I think it's okay. I'm just saying. I think it's okay. It passes. Yeah. Uh, but it does look a little like maybe he just took a drug test. But he didn't because we don't drug test Micah because he's he's. Definitely much more There's straight arrow. There's only one anybody. employee that we, that we yeah. drug test. Yeah. There's one we drug test, and but he's nobody not here else. Right he's now. not here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. That's a joke. That's a joke. It's a joke. Nobody. Nobody. Coat of new paint, Micah Sargent. Oh, too bad the name's spelled wrong. They always... Um, Incorrectly. I mean. It's with a K. Mike with a K, not Mike with a C, because Mike with a C is Micah. Micah with a C is biblical. Biblical. Micah with a K is... <laughs> what? Unique. One of a kind. And it seems right. It does look like Mississippi tap water. Looks oh, good. Oh, that's sad. That is sad. Um, Next time, I'm not using a glass. I'm using a mug, so no one can you, judge I, I my I don't know bedding. why I used a, bell, a ball jar for some reason. Are you going to do some canning later? It was the only large enough jar to fit my silly experiment. I think uh, that must be from uh, Debbie. She's, she's the only one in the 
building who's that does canning or jarring yeah, or crafty possible. enough to be <laughs> using ball jars looks like the moonshine and peach juice are left in the fridge oh no that's why it's got that mm, it's tangy <laughs> Ooh, it's tangy mighty tangy mm, mm, mm. i dare say yeah mm-hmm i do like those georgia oh, peaches georgia peaches now i seemed you should use an Erlenmeyer flask. You should use, what's the big round bottom flask they use in Breaking Bad? Oh. It's very, very expensive. What are those called? I don't know. You can't, they're, they're no good because you have to have a stand for them. But, you know, you know you need them. Round bottom flasks, also called round bottomed flasks, or RB flasks. RB flasks. RB flasks. RB flasks. Concert was uh, very good, although... Motley Crue does attract a bit of a reprobate crowd. So it was very feisty. I was wondering if it got a little feisty in the Very in the feisty. The uh, security people were very busy. And we were at row six. So we were, we were like, you know. And, you were and, among the most committed? Yeah, but we're also in the place everybody in the entire stadium wants to be. Oh, no. So everybody in the entire stadium tries to get in there. And I, I, uh, it's not, yeah. That's why we're going to see Katy Perry in Vegas, where they know how to police. <laughs> yeah, that actually sounds. I'll tell you that another sounds thing. Sounds exhausting. You really don't want to see Motley Crue up close. <laughs> it's better from a distance. They're Motley, all right. To maintain I'll, the I'll pull illusion. Up some, I'll pull up some pictures. We were, we were so close. It was actually kind of wild. You could smell their breath. You you could. They were as close as I am to you. Wow. Um, and uh, what I like about that is you feel like it's actually a, a music performance. You're not so far. You, that's you, it's true. like the band is there playing for you. And and I realized that's worth that's worth it because you know you're really um, you're really there. Like here's Brett Michaels laughing at my outfit. Uh, <laughs> How old is Brett Michaels these days? He's 60, well, roughly 60. He's about my age. Well, no, he's younger than me. But he 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 was great. Poison was amazing. Oh, is Brett Michaels Look at that. He part says, of Poison? Yeah. Okay. And they're saying hi to everybody. And the whole band came out at the end and thanked people. Oh, that's cool. Uh, you know, it, that was amazing. To that feel was, that connection yeah, is cool. Yeah. Our show today brought to you by the great folks... At stamps.com. You know I'm a stamps.com lover. We've been using stamps.com since, I think, the turn of the century. I can't remember. <laughs> For, forever. Uh, as any business should. Because I don't want our, you know, our staff having to go down to the post office to buy postage. That's crazy. And I certainly don't want to get a postage meter. That's even nuts. Nutsier. Is that a word? Nuttier. Uh... Stamps.com does everything you can do at the post office without leaving your desk. Your computer, your printer, no special ink, no postage meter. It is the way to do your postage. And especially as we approach the holiday season, when those lines get longer, the parking slots, uh, uh, lots get filled up. It's, it's, it's a real time sink to go to the post office. Now, I love the post office, but... And, and poster carriers, as you heard, we had a caller from a, a postal carrier who was on his route calling us a couple of hours ago. Love are a post office, but so does Stamps.com. And now, Stamps.com is even better. It's a 24-7 post office. You can access from everywhere. And now, not only U.S. Postal Service, UPS, United Parcel Service, too. So it is really the one stop for all of your mailing needs. Stamps.com has been a partner of this show since 2012. We've been using them even longer. If you haven't tried them, surely you've heard me talk about them. I'm wondering what I can do to get you to try it. You, maybe this UPS thing will put you over the top. You get access to the USPS and UPS services. You get discounts that you cannot get at the post office or anywhere else from UPS, up to 86% off. Use stamps.com to print postage wherever you do business. All you need is a computer or a printer. It'll print right on the envelope. 
your logo, the return address, it take the mailing address from your software. So if you're an eBay or Etsy seller or an Amazon seller, it'll automatically take the address, fill that in. If you need to fill out any forms, customs forms or priority mail forms, it'll print those out for you automatically. So it saves you so much time. It'll even tell you, and I love this, with their switch and save feature, stamps.com lets you compare carriers and rates so you'll always get the best deal every time. So wonderful if you're doing an online store. Stamps.com will work seamlessly with all the major shopping carts and marketplaces. Uh, if, if when it's time to come, you know, get the mail, you don't have to go to the post office or even the post the mailbox outside. They'll come and get you. They've even got a you know little switch on your dashboard that says "Come and get it." It's all ready to go, and it looks professional. This is another thing that we don't talk about enough. But if you're shipping. That stamps.com indicia there and your logo, it just makes you look like a big business, even if you're not. I love it. Get ahead of the holiday chaos this year. Get started with stamps.com. We've got a great offer code for you. If you if you click the microphone in the upper right-hand corner on the web page and enter the promo code TWIT, you'll get a four-week trial. You'll get a massive amount of free postage. You'll get a free digital scale. No long-term commitment or contracts. It's just the best way to try it. And honestly, I, you, I know you've heard me talk about it. This is the time. Right now, go to stamps.com, click that microphone at the top of the page, enter the offer code TWIT. We have been ha happy stamps.com customers for more than a decade. Uh, I think you'll love it too. Stamps.com. Click the microphone, enter TWIT, and say goodbye to all your mail and woes. <laughs> Stamps.com. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent taking your calls. It's really great to have you here, by the way, Mike. I miss you when you're not here. Uh, it's it's just nice to have a younger person. Well, I enjoy being here yeah. as well. You know, and you know a lot of stuff, and that's uh, it's a great help. Myron on the line from Minneapolis, the Twin Cities. Hello, Myron. Hey, Leo. Uh, both of you. Um, I've got a question. I always thought that uh, wired was supposed to be faster than Wi-Fi. Yes, it is. Um, I've got Comcast, and I've got a Nighthawk. I'm paying for 400 and on, on my Wi-Fi, I'm getting like 365 to 390 wow. cons cons consistent. Wow, that's great. But on my uh, desktop, uh, uh, it's I'm getting 80. Oh, that's not good. And that's plugged into the Nighthawk directly yeah, with, 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 with an Ethernet yeah, with, Ethernet cable. Yeah. So six, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, that's what, that was going to be my first question. It's a fast cable, but this, cable. it may be a bad cable. It a it's bad easy cable. to get bad cables. Uh, How old's the lap? The, the computer as well. Well, it's it's uh, it's probably about four four years. It's a, it's an that's, apple. That's fa uh, that's an apple. Uh, so there's something wrong. Obviously, mm -hmm. that should be if you're getting four th or three eighty on Wi-Fi. I think that means you're getting from your provider more like 700, six or 700, because Wi-Fi is always, you know, 60% of the total possible bandwidth. So I think you're getting even more than you're paying for. So it's ridiculous that you're seeing only 80. Uh, same same speed test tool in both cases? Yes. Yes. Using a VPN or anything like that? Um. I do have a VPN, but I, I do it without... Yeah, without turn off any on. any of that stuff. It is yeah. possible uh, in the Nighthawk, which is a very nice router, that you have QoS, quality uh, of service, turned on. Could be. And it is, for some reason, prioritizing uh, Wi-Fi over hardwired. So I would look at the settings in the Nighthawk. In fact, probably okay in this case to go back to the default settings. The Nighthawk has a... You know, at the advan in the I think the last page, the advanced page, it says you know reset to factory settings. Uh, I think it might be worth trying that. You you have multiple Ethernet cable uh, ports on the Nighthawk. You I presume tried all of them, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I would if you didn't uh, definitely try a different cable just to be sure. Is it and it's a four year old Mac. Um, it's a Mac, Mac Mini. It's it's not the M one or anything like that. Yeah. I'm wondering. 
Yeah, because the the Apple TV, not the newest one, but the, it wasn't too long ago that the Apple TV, the Wi-Fi was faster than the Ethernet because they were still using... I'm wondering if they're using 10 megabit Ethernet yeah. or something like that. But that seems... Well, uh, that's the thing to I check. Get up, I, get up, I get close to 200 on the Apple TV. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, yeah, I was just making a comparison No, no, I think, the, I think it's the Mini. Uh, we're pretty sure it's the Mini is the problem. Yeah. Right. Um, turn off Wi-Fi on the Mini. Um, I wonder if you have a very slow Ethernet port on mm -hmm. it. You might look on the specs on that Mini. Something is, go. yeah, something's wrong. Either go back to the default settings on the Net, Nighthawk or turn off if you have a QoS. I know you have a QoS setting. If you have QoS, the Nighthawk has a very elaborate QoS page you might want to uh, disable QoS, see if that fixes it. There's, you know, there's definitely something wrong. So this is a 2018 Mac Mini. Uh, the, no, that should have a, at least yeah, 100 megabit, if not. And it's, yeah, 10, 100, 1,000 base T. Yeah, so it's gigabit. Okay. N base T at one gig, yeah. So um, right. maybe the Nighthawk port is, is is a 10 megabit port. Make sure the Nighthawk is capable. You want gigabit everywhere. Gigabit ports, gigabit cable, Six Cat6 six is gigabit. Um, yeah. It might just be a bad cable. Something, Something's wrong, uh, and I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, the problem is there are so many different things that it could possibly be. But you're right in your basic <laughs> assessment that, you know, I should be getting faster. I would definitely launch yeah. your system preferences and go into the network tab and just make sure uh, in that network tab on the left, there are lots of different uh, options, including your Wi-Fi, including your Ethernet. Uh, but if you've ever installed a, a network filter of any kind, uh, making sure that that is disabled by choosing the more option and setting the service to uh, inactive, uh, that will include a link in the show notes as well at techguylabs.com for a little bit more information about that. But it, there may be some strange filtering going on that's that's causing this. If on it's the, not just the there cable. is also we'll put a Mike B has found a Apple support page that in the system report you want to make sure that that uh, the Ethernet is set to one thousand base T right, um, and it will tell you actually uh, on your connection if you're a thousand base T. So I think that might be, we'll put a link here. This is a bit of a, you know, Involved. elaborate <laughs> um, discussion. Um, but that's interesting. In other words, you can see, you know how when you go into the Apple menu and the About This Mac, there's a system report. You can, if you go into the network area, you can see what that Mac thinks it's connected to. And it that will at least tell you if... It's a slow port on the Nighthawk. If it's a bad cable, or or something, you know, something else is wrong. So at least that will say the Mac will say, "Oh yeah, this is a thousand gigabit or a thousand megabit connection, which is a gigabit." Um, if it's less than a gigabit connection, a thousand. If it's a hundred megabit, that's too slow, and that's that would actually make sense. You would get eighty. Yeah. So I'm thinking it's something around there. Uh, the cable shouldn't be too long, um, not more than ten feet, certainly. Um, although I've used longer cables and hadn't been able to get full speed. So those are a few things that at least look at. It's hard for us to diagnose because there's so many things that can go wrong in a case like that. But there's some few things to try. You know, the, look at the QoS settings in the Nighthawk or get it back to the factory uh, condition. I would First thing I would do is go in that mini, get the system report, and look at the network and see what speed it thinks that Ethernet cable is. Also, make sure, of course, uh, in your network settings that Ethernet is the top. Uh, you get us. You have a stack of mm -hmm. possible connections. Always, when you've got Ethernet, always put that at the top. Um, okay. So I think those are a few. You know, with the maximum link speed, I'd be curious. I hope some of that helps. Yeah, well, I hope so too. I uh, I really appreciate you guys. I I listen all the time. I've been listening. For Thank years. you. Nice, Myron. But, uh, That's great. I'm, I'm delivering mail right now, so I didn't. Know. Oh, we appreciate it. I love my postal carrier. Thank you for the work you do. I hope you get one of those nice new uh, vehicles soon. <laughs> yeah. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Johnny Jett, coming up. Yeah, turn off Wi-Fi. All right, going to show more pictures. This is uh, Cece DeVille. So so the, the show started at 4.30. So okay. Joan Jett 
and and poison were in the daylight and then the sun actually it was cool the sun started to set as crew was playing so we got some really nice golden hour oh neat pictures but there's uh cc deville there's brett i actually Is... i was never a fan of any of these bands except maybe john jett but uh, I became a fan of Poison. I was very impressed with Brett Michaels' energy. His, uh, his, you know, the band was just super cool. Is CC Deville part of Poison as well? Yeah, got it. Yeah, he's their uh, their guitarist. He's actually really a cool dude. Doesn't wear much sunscreen. Yeah, you could tell he's a little dark. <laughs> this is the was second to last uh, date of the tour. That's a cool guitar. Oh, I know. Look at that. Look at that. Every rose has a stone. I'm sorry. And then they came out uh, right to the edge, which is very cool. Oh, I like that jumping shot you got there. That's kind of neat. Oh, I didn't even notice that. He's off the ground. I think he just floats that way. <laughs> the energy of the crowd. Uh, now, this is crew. They had a little bit more elaborate set. <laughs> Are they like, were they the big one? No, Def Leppard was the... Oh, Def Leppard. But okay. They had dancing girls. It was actually joint... See the dancing girl in the back? There was a joint um, headliners, so they alternate. Who's that on the drum there? Not the person playing, but the oh, person that's, on uh, the Oh, that's Taylor floor. Hawkins. It's a tribute to the uh, Foo Fighters drummer. Oh, past. got it. But it's okay. obviously Tommy Lee. Yes, yeah, so this is Vince Neil. <laughs> oh, wait, I thought that was still <laughs> not, Michael. Not yeah, George looking Michael great. <laughs> oh, now I can see. That's definitely a different guy. <laughs> that is a deep V. Not looking. He was, yeah. Uh, and who is he part of? This is a uh, crew. Motley okay, so crew. that's still Motley Crew. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they were just a little, you know what? These guys have lived a hard life. There I am <laughs> giving them the... Devil horns. Actually, I don't think that's me, but yeah, I haven't. I haven't gone through these. That's Nikki Six in the background. He's got Kickstart written on his base because he he was dead for a couple minutes, and then they gave him a double adrenaline shot and kickstarted his heart. So Holy moly! He wrote a song about it. And uh, are you a Motley Crue fan, Johnny? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, these guys. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm like one of their songs. I like it's some like, of their songs. You, you know, this is n none of these bands were my my band. I, but, I love Def Leppard. I love my Leopard sister Joan. Was, Leopard was very good. Joan Jett was amazing. I didn't get any pictures of her. Lisa I got a lot of pictures. I think she's the only one whose songs I've actually heard. Before. Yeah, yeah, me too. I don't know anyone. I was after singing. after the show. The only song I was singing was hers. You don't know Def Leppard, Michael? No, I recognize the names of all of the other He's bands. He's too young, saying, but none of the Johnny. People, but you got Def Leppard's you your know. age group. I definitely, but you got to know their songs. Pour some sugar on me. Oh, that's them. Okay. Pour yes. some sugar on me. You definitely know them. I That's know that. the only song. Yeah, I know that. See, he's got a knife, sure. knife strapped to his boot. Not sure what he's Wait, expecting. Wait, for what? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, it's to be fair, it's San Francisco. there have been a lot of times lately where performers on stage have been hit by things and yeah, people well, have jumped up. So, so the sun starts them. to go down. You see, it gets dark all of a sudden. Oh, so you got to switch into warmer they clothes. They change their clothes. <laughs> Although the jeans are still pretty run down. Now, can they sing well still? Or No. Well, Vince actually sounded like <laughs> no. Vince, believe it or not. What is that thing on? What is that spinning? That's his uh, mic stand. He's, oh, he's, he's got it He's up. wielding okay. his be bejeweled mic stand. Got it. That's another weapon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah stay away from that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he's been everywhere, man. This guy is a traveling dude. Johnny Jet. From johnnyjet.com. Mr. Jet, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. Jealous jealous of your pictures. Oh, I was just showing in the break, I was just showing um, some pictures from the, <laughs> the... <laughs> the concert. By the way, you might say, Leo, you're a little too old to go see Joan Jett, Poison, Motley Crue, and Def Leppard. Oh, no, I was exactly the age of everybody else. <laughs> I was saying he might be one of the younger people. That's the weirdest thing about seeing rock concerts these days. It's not people Micah's age. Yeah. I, I went to an Alt-J concert recently, and, well, it's been a little, a little while now, and I didn't realize that they were as much rock as they are until I looked around and saw that everybody there was so much older than I was. Who? They're called Alt-J. No idea. 
I've never heard of them either. Never heard of them. They're, they're newer, old. but uh, I didn't realize that they were liked by rock people. And like rock and roll is essentially music for old folks. People Johnny's age and older, right, Johnny? And I like Wait. it that it was outdoors, too. It was outdoors, and it was nice. There was no one, and I mean no one, wearing a mask. I had one on when I went in, and I felt so silly. Oh, see, you can't let the I peer took it pressure off. A peer pressure. To I took it off. You can't let that happen. No, I wanted to be rock and roll. I, so people, yeah, people very close to me. So I've been testing way. ever since the concert, by the way. So Johnny, you had, what's, co you had COVID three weeks ago. I just read. I did that. Um, I think I have I've just read that the government says that you know don't even get the new shot if you've had COVID in the last three months. Works the really? same? Is that what they're saying? It's really? Like, yeah. Well, I, listen, or is it dangerous? I'm not a doctor. Don't, don't take my advice. Stuff. Yeah. Oh but wait, I I'll ask my said, they, they, What I read is said that you're protected. But yeah, anyway. I'll ask my doctor, and I'll, he'll he'll tell me what I have to do. But uh, uh, yeah, I did. I only I got it a, a month ago. So I just scheduled my new booster for Monday. Good. So did Lisa, and she had it a month so, ago. So I don't know. I don't know. She I would, did not. I take a look she at that. did not fare as well as I did. She had some yeah you know, hers long COVID rough. stuff. She says she's still foggy. And uh, her taste is still gone, so that's I, not. I that's still my worst remain nightmare. Remain a person who yeah. has never gotten it. I know he's wood. a he's a unicorn. But let's again, let's talk travel. That's what yeah. we're here for. Well, well, the big news this week is obviously the Queen died. Uh, prices to London are going up. I big bet time, you, as you, know, you can imagine. I bet you literally millions of people will go to London for her funeral, which is about definitely. To, well, one of my friends in Alaska said his daughter's going. Here's Same. why I Same. like the monarchy. Okay, not that anybody asked. <laughs> it's nice to have a leader like the Pope. I'm not Catholic either, who doesn't have a political agenda. Well, I guess they kind of do. But the the King of England or the Queen of England, they're not allowed to have a political opinion. So they're just there to make you, you know, oh, look, there's... I do like that aspect. <laughs> there's yeah. nice clothes. You know, they wear nice outfits. Yeah. That's what they're there for. They're kind of funny as these sort and of... The, and to reassure dolls. you in difficult times, they're like little, they're like dolls, like having a dolls in a dollhouse. Yeah. Only they're... But what, what's interesting is that the banknotes are about to change. Everything. The yeah. banknotes. The queen's the post, going and it's going to be the king Mailboxes. Everything says E2R everywhere you go. That's all got to change. It's, so and, don't and go and to London. Song. Is that Even what you're saying? God save the king. God now. save the king. The, we're gonna have to. By get, the way, I met the, the king. Uh, I ever tell you the time I met the king? No. I w well, he was a prince, but I was at a. I was having dinner with the PR, the GM of the big Marriott hotel, the Grosvenor House in London, and he's like, "Oh, he got a text. He's like, oh man, the Prince Charles is coming for a big event. I got to go greet him.' I was like, "Can I go with you?" He's wow. like, "Let me ask the security detail." He's like, they said, yes, you just have to stand behind me and don't wow. and don't do anything. And I was anyway. excited about seeing Motley Crue. <laughs> wow. That's nice pretty old impressive. Tim Cook, but it was cares? freezing outside. I waited for 20 minutes, had a Blackberry. It was a, over a decade ago. And he comes out and he greets him. And then all of a sudden he just walks right by me and he was looking at me. I just stuck my hand out and I go, hey, Prince Charles. And he just looked at me. It was really awkward. And I was like, man, I just committed a big faux pas. Oh, these, you sure did. You're not supposed to these, speak until spoken to. I know. You're not supposed to try to shake their hand. Shocking. All the paparazzi China. was taking pictures, but anyway, he Shocking. then came in. He shook my hand. He sat and talked to me for like who? You know, Charlie? Yeah, for like twenty seconds. The guy was hilarious. I said something that must have made him laugh because the paparazzi later said, "What did you say that made him laugh?" What and did I you said, say? I, really don't, I don't even remember. But wow. he was actually that twenty seconds. He was. I felt he, I felt that he was very funny and, and charming. I think that that's pretty impressive. I'm I am impressed. I've so. talked to the man who danced with the girl who danced with the <laughs> Prince of Wales. That's very good, Johnny. Congratulations. Anyway. So that was my and Travel. I also took I, I just took a <laughs> all we've learned so far is don't go <laughs> yeah. to London right now. All right. You so might want I to. put in I, I put in the chat room, I just wrote a post on Google, just came out this week with the best times to book flights. Oh, I like they, that. They analyze five years of their Google flights. This is an eternal question analytics. I've asked you many times. Should I book it six months ahead, two months, one month, the day before? Exactly. What's the best time? So, so according to Google, yeah. you know, there's some things that you already know. So, you know, they say, obviously, the best time to fly is midweek. Tuesdays yes. and Wednesdays. I, you'll see, you could tell that when you book, you know, you try to book yeah, on a Saturday. You, you didn't need them. Also, they'll yeah. say, you know, nonstop is much more expensive than making taking a layover. So always consider that. But you know, if it's only a few dollars cheaper, I would not book a and a and open over. sandwich flights are or, not good. I mean, open uh, or a they, connecting flight. Open uh, open mouth. Open. What do they call them? You, you, you mean a uh, open jaw? <laughs> open jaw. Thank you. Yeah, that's when you fly. Let's <laughs> Those are more expensive. L.A. to London and then go Paris to, yeah, to L.A. Yeah, or don't whatever. do that either. Yeah. Um, 
Those are more usually actually depends now dude, because a lot of one way tickets are not more expensive than oh, round trips. Okay. But you have to dig down to this data. So they have it for when's the best time to book a spring break ticket, uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas. So for Christmas, they say, you know, 36 to 74 days before departure mm. is usually the time in the 52 days out is the lowest point. Also, um, well, that's okay. Say, that's, but that's specifically for the, the holidays. Yes. For Christmas. And that's Thanksgiving. interesting. Okay. So it all depends on where you're going. So spring break, they say the lowest, if you're departing in March or April, usually 23 to 59 days before departure and 30 days out is the low point. And for summer vacation, you know, you don't want to book too early ever unless you're using miles and points or you really have to be on this certain flight in a set date. But if the, if the price goes seat. down, can't you get like a, a, a refund? You can now, thanks to, as long as you're not buying the most basic ticket. So always read the fare rule. So that's why I say avoid buying these basic economy tickets. I had a reader this week email me say, hey, I took your advice. I set a fare alert. The price dropped. I called up United and the agent said, you know what? I can't get the full discount. I said, why don't you just cancel your flight and rebook it? He goes, oh, I didn't think of that. And so he did that. So that's the way to do it. But okay. make sure that you can get that flight before. Actually, you should probably book it. Actually, I don't think you can book the ticket first. So you have to cancel the other one, but just put it on hold. And um, so, but in general, just a very rough rule of thumb, you want to buy at least a month ahead of time. It sounds like it all depends. There's sometimes if you're using miles and points, I look, I look just a few hours before sometimes. Oh, because sometimes uh, they, they have they seats that up. are empty and they'll say, well, we might as well get something. Yeah, it, it yeah. all depends. I, you know, last week, but that's I taking about, a look, chance because it, it is, they may oh, not definitely taking a chance and you're not going to most likely you're not going to get a great seat unless you stick around the gate and you know, if they upgrade their frequent flyers are usually holding the best seats like the exit row or the right. bulkhead, you can say, Hey, can you put me in there? Um, there's all kinds of tricks, but it takes time. So I'll put this in my newsletter. I'll send it to you guys. You can put it in your show notes, but, um, there's a lot of good data in there. So always set a fair alert is my number one tip for finding, uh, great deals. Also, actually the number one tip is being flexible. Number two is setting the fair alert. Do you have a, way you a, can tell. a statue of the queen behind you? I do. I thought you did. That's interesting. Oh, that's funny. Where'd you get that? Got it at a party. I've gone. I, I'm fortunate. <laughs> I've gone to England many times. Nice. And I, I right, think buddy. this was from Virgin okay. Atlantic. That um, was one of their parties. Yeah, the little bag. Yeah. I. You know. It. It. I. I. I was a little saddened by it. She's roughly my mother's age, so I kind of feel for Charles that, too. Yeah. I can't understand. Same. That's hard. That's really hard. Johnny Jet. JohnnyJet.com, and don't forget his newsletters and Instagram and Twitter feeds too. Thank you, John. Hey. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny Jet. I forgot I had it on there. Up there. Johnny Jett and the Blackhearts, my favorite band of the concert. I guess you'd have to like Joan Jett, wouldn't you? Definitely. <laughs> Joan <laughs> my Jett. Sister I, Joan. I mean, I liked her before I found out we were related. <laughs> we're not related, in just case she's listening. <laughs> you don't know this, Micah, uh, but he used to be Johnny Jetski. What? Yep. Because he's yep, Polish. That was my nickname. No, because he likes to ride jet skis. Was this before you started traveling or while you were still? Yes. Okay. Growing up on Long Island Sound, I used to jet ski. I had a jet ski, said Johnny Jet Ski on the back. Oh, I used that's to ride. Did you have a stand up? Yeah, of course. It of was course. old school. Yeah, that's what and Lisa loves. She used to do crazy stunts on her jet ski. Like they'd wake, the they'd surf the wake of a boat and flip over the boat. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't flip over a boat. That's insane. Well, that's but I would my jump wife. The I would, I would jump the wave. And, yeah, she uh, would always wave jump. She got, in, she'd get in trouble all the time. And even submerge <laughs> it. You right. can even submerge <laughs> she'd it. Get in trouble all the time. The cops would come. You know, the, the boat cops there. would come and coast guard or whatever, and it's they'd they'd make her sit in the water in the cold water while they lectured her. She yeah. has some. Next time we get together, I'll get her to tell you some stories. I, I would love to hear it. But yeah, so when I started traveling, I had to come up with a good name, and I was like, you know what, I'm not Polish. Just cut I'll the just ski drop off. The ski and uh, but Johnny did you? Jet. But, so, I, I, so were you a competitive but, jet skier? No, I wasn't on on the tour or anything like that. Right. No, I wasn't just for you. I just I just loved to do it because I know you love Def Leppard. Let's hear it. I'll give you some. I won't play it. Well, actually, Lisa, I think can, can you play stuff. it? I think I I'll might try. have some audio. Let me look and see. Here's uh, here's. We had such good seats. I mean, they were they were right there. 
And they sounded great, by the way. They... My my favorite song is Hysteria by them. They did Hysteria. They, they and their voices are still great. They're mu they're fantastic. This is the guy Lisa always had a crush on, the bass player. I think he's I think he's making eyes at her right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean these guys I was this close. I mean, this is really yeah, you're right there. Yeah. Yeah. It was they were good. I didn't really. I only know "Poured Some Sugar on Me." I didn't know any of their songs. I kind of so recognized. How long was some. the whole concert? Uh, six hours. Four hours. Six oh, hours. God, Leo. we were there, we're and Lisa diaper? danced the whole. Si well, you can go to the bathroom. They have bathrooms. Or so Oracle Park. The there was a chair, but mostly we we're standing. Lisa had twenty-seven thousand steps because she basically pogoed oh the whole freaking time. That's she impressive. was really happy. Oh, there's the drummer by the way at the end there, the one-armed drummer. He I was, was amazing. Say, he has one arm, right? Yeah, he was amazing. I love this band because when he got in an auto wreck and lost his arm, they stopped recording for 4 years. They said, "No, no, we're not going to record anything without a drummer." That's awesome. And they re redid all their songs so that he could do them, and he's a really good drummer. So that was kind of cool. He's barefoot by the way. He's a barefoot drummer. Like well, the Barefoot Contessa. Yeah. I, I got a quick question for you. Yes, sir. So next week, Cranky Flyer is having this big party at In-N-Out Burger, Burger that I go to. Oh, yeah, week. right at the airport yeah. at LAX. So should I, should I call from my the phone party? And zoom in on my phone? Yes. Okay, because I was like, otherwise, because usually I rush home. And Only I if you want to. Don't rush home. No, I, no, I won't rush home. I'll do it from the park. That would be so awesome. Yeah, that would be fun. Okay. Please. So we might need to test it right before just to make sure there's strong enough signal. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to be 400... And if not, don't worry a about aviation it. geeks there. It's a great story. I love it because apparently the in and out at LAX has the best view of planes taking off. Ah, uh, so does. they have a party I mean, there every in year. LA or in, even in America. It, it has the best. So yeah, and it's open to the public. I think one can go. It's uh, so definitely next week. Let's definitely do that. Okay. And if I'll you can't, it. just record something and we'll play it back. <laughs> well, no, seriously, just record some video from, and, from the party. Oh, but you wouldn't be able to send it to us. So never mind. See okay. you, Johnny. Bye, Take Johnny care. Jet. Bye, See Johnny. You. This is Alt J. Wait, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. One of their more recent songs. This is not rock and roll. Just give it a second. <laughs> See? It's Professor Laura knows. This is good. This is like that uh, wolf guy you like. Oh, Wolfpack? Wolfpack. <laughs> It sounds a little like Roofbeck. Yeah. I've got a I've You have a thing for that kind it. of pseudo rock, it's what I call it. <laughs> pseudo rock. Pseudo young person's rock. Leo I'm Laporte you. and young person Micah Sargent. We're answering your calls. 8888 Ask Leo. If you've got a tech quit don't ask Mike about music. But if you've got a tech question, we would <laughs> Unless you're a young person, you guys <laughs> Who should we take next, Micah? You tell me. Uh, I think we're going to Portugal. What? Yeah. The man? John in Portugal. <laughs> hey, you know them. Yeah. No, it's not John, actually. We'll go to John in a second. It's first, it's Susan, Susan. in Friday Harbor, Washington. I didn't know that was a place. Uh, Hello. It, it is. Hello, Hello Susan. Leo. Hello. Long time listener watched you uh, when you were on television. When I was young. Yeah. When we both. <laughs> 20 years ago, yeah. Well, it's great to meet yeah. you, Susan. Thank you. No, thank you, too. Uh, Where's Friday Harbor? I want to move to Washington. I'm thinking of moving up there. Uh, it's cooler, right? You didn't have 100-degree temperatures this yes. week, did you? No. No. No, we did not. No. We had, we had uh, apparently, uh, there were 90 degree for a couple of days last week, but I was in the high uh, Arctic, um, Canadian Arctic. On a pass on a Northwest Passage cruise, oh, I've, talk, I've want always to wanted to do that. Yes, it was absolutely wonderful. It was uh, we did Hurtigurten and started in Iceland. And I've, I've been on the Hurtigurten. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> I was on the Hurtigurten in Norway. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. So and you did the Hurdy Gruten. The, I call him the Hurdy Gruten. I know that's not how you pronounce it, but I just like the way that sounds. Uh, I, so you did the Hurdy Gruten to the uh, Arctic. Wow. Yeah, to the high Arctic, yes. From uh, Iceland to uh, Cambridge Bay, um, Nunanook. 
It was it was wonderful. Oh, it was absolutely that's wonderful. That's an adventure. I'm very um, jealous. That sounds paid, great. Paid the, paid the higher price, um, and it was very much worth it. Nice. And I took along my new Canon EOS with the 100 to 500 Brilliant. millimeter lens and Brilliant. was out on the, on the deck and took lots of birding and animals and... Um, I had this very heavy laptop that I need to replace because I don't want to carry a heavy laptop, a 15-year-old heavy laptop with Ugh, me to yuck. do photo editing. Yeah. But uh, So I have several things that I'd like to replace now. Um, and the first is my iPad Pro, which is a 2016 model. And um, oh, Before great. we go any further, wait. Yeah. Yes. That's your first next month. Okay, that's what I thought. Next month, new iPads, both the base model, the I don't know what this model will be, iPad eight or eleven or something, and and I think we're thinking new iPad Pro as well. Yeah, it's time. And that is, I have the iPad Pro with the M1 chip. Okay. That's a you wouldn't need yeah. to bring a laptop. For in fact, right. it's a better photo editing device than any laptop because it has a better screen. More photo, real, yeah. you know, the, the accuracy of the screen is superb. And touch is great for photo editing. So I am very yeah. happy to edit all my photos on the iPad. Okay. All right. So uh, October that comes out, supposedly. Next month, yes. Okay, okay. Almost, I would say almost certainly. Almost certainly. Yes. Okay. I thought I should wait. That's why I'm asked. Yep. Um, also, um, uh, I'm, I'm learning this with a friend and uh, in a laptop. We're using ACDC. And he says, you know, you are such touch screen uh, in your editing on your iPhone. You really need a uh, different uh, photo editing. Um, which one should I get? For well, when you get your new iPad, there's a lot of good choices. Yeah. What do you like? I well, like I, I like uh, Pixelmator Photo. Me too. On, Superb. On iPad because it is purpose built to be an excellent okay. photo editing application. It has there. amazing features like uh, you can erase stuff. Uh, you know, smart oh, erase. It's really definitely. good. It was five dollars. I think it's probably a little more, but it's not much. I would suggest yeah, three programs. Cool. Certainly, Pixelmator Pro. Right. I would also get Darkroom. Uh -huh. Darkroom has more is more filter focused, but that sometimes you know you've got a great shot. All you want to do is make it a beautiful high contrast black and white shot, which I think with the polar bears yeah. in the snow would be great. Uh, that's a good way yeah. to do that. And then Affinity Photo is really Photoshop for the iPad. All together, all three will cost you one-tenth of what Photoshop would cost you alone. Beautiful. Uh, and these, are, if you have those three photo editing programs, you've got the creme de la creme. Mm -hmm. They'll all three handle RAW from that Canon. Uh, so you can okay. shoot RAW, so will your iPad. The only thing I would say is get a lot of storage. Okay. So well, they, they will offer, I got a two terabyte, believe it or not, two terabyte iPad. Uh, that's probably okay. overkill, but but you might want the one terabyte. Just look at how many photos you took, and how much space they took okay. up, and that's how much okay. you'll need because you're not. You can offload it once you get home, but you want enough room for all the pictures you're going to shoot on any given trip. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, second question is: um, I have this laptop, Asperian uh, Nitro, um, and I'm thinking about. I do both PC and um, uh, iOS, but I'm thinking, and I have a desktop that's a, a PC. Um, this laptop is getting old. Um, 15 years old? Um, 15 years old? Yeah. Wow. 2016. Oh, oh, I guess not. Six years old. Oh, that's a relief. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was impressed. So that. I <laughs> estimate that, you know how they always talk about dog years equals seven dog years is one human year, right? Yeah. Laptops is about 15. Mm -hmm. So a six-year-old laptop is 90 years old. A 15-year-old laptop, <laughs> I can't even do it's the math. It's so old. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's like several centuries ago. So, yeah, it's time for a new, uh -huh. nice new laptop. I would get a Mac uh, since you're getting an iPad, but it's up to you. Okay. 
The Mac Pro or a Mac? M1 Mac. Uh, I would say the Air, the new Air. You got the M2 Air. Yeah, it's so powerful that like, I, I've, I've used Affinity. I've used Pixelmator Pro. I've used these applications on it, and it does not sweat at all. And the thing that you're going to love, Susan, is that there may be times where you want to use you know, the, the keyboard shortcuts and the, the trackpad to be able to do stuff with editing your photos, or maybe even just the organization part. And because it's so lightweight... I do like that is yeah. where you're really going to be happy to be able to bring that along. You've got your, if you've got an iPad uh, and your MacBook Air kind of right next to each other, you can use that uh, iPad as the device for doing the photo editing. But then the MacBook Air yeah. can serve as the, the sort of area for everything else. So I really think that uh, you wouldn't need to do more than that unless you really felt like you were going to be doing lots of, you know, deep processing with these photos. But I just took some, I, I did some recent uh, crochet projects and I like to use a better camera to take photos of those. So it really shows the stitches and I shoot those in raw. I pulled them up on my MacBook Air, this M2 MacBook Air I have, and it didn't sweat at all with them. Okay, sounds good. Uh, which uh, keyboard should I get with the new uh, iPad Pro that I'm getting? Just I get, like, just get Apple's uh, keyboard that lights up. Oh, it lights yeah. up. Yeah, the yeah. one that comes with. Uh, just get Apple's. I've tried all the other ones, the Bridge and. The, okay. the Logitech, and they're disappointing in a variety of ways. One of which is they add a huge amount of weight. Uh, the okay. Apple yeah, is, want, like, yeah, Apple's is just okay. fine, and that's what I use. Okay, so, uh, and I'm up for a, an Apple Watch. Um, how does it compare to the Garmin Extreme Sport? And I do snorkel. I think the new Ultra is very comparable. It's it's on par with um, the, the like the biggest difference. And Garmin was quick to tweet this is battery life. Mm -hmm. You'll get th they say 36 hours, day and a half battery life on the Apple Watch. Garmin says well, we have six days, but I find I'm I'm charging every night no matter what. So if if that's part yeah. of your routine, because you charge your phone every night. Um, I do. Yeah, I I don't think every, battery every, life is I an issue. Yeah, man, snorkeling, okay. going right. to the Arctic. I kind of want to. You know what it has that I really like the you the, the now because of the because of scuba gloves, it's got much bigger buttons and knobs. You twirl the knob and it goes to red. Yeah, a night mode. I so love you could that. do uh, you know astronomy or swimming. I think it's going to be a very nice watch. But we'll we'll have one in a week. We'll let you know. Leo and Micah, your tech guys. Yeah, I mean, I you know, there because it's not out yet. There are no reviews yet, so we yeah. don't know. And people who have their Garmin Extremes, you, you have one now? Uh, no, I have a friend who loves it. Yeah, they are fanatical about it. Uh, yeah. I think Apple's aiming straight at it. Mm -hmm. But who knows yeah. if it'll be better. Uh, I mean, that's the thing. How many journalists, tech journalists that are getting early access to this are also people who snorkel? Yeah, you don't want to have some like fat guy. Uh, <laughs> not you, me. <laughs> but I do snorkel. I love to snorkel. And I love to scuba. So I will try it that way. But it won't be for a year or so. I want to see you uh, scuba with it. That would right. be amazing. I love scuba. Um, and... Uh, so it, it's a it has a it's a dive watch, mm -hmm. uh, a full yeah. on dive computer with the yeah. app at third party, app. and you can get that uh, what is it the Humish Humish watch app or whatever. So what, okay, what so I'll wait and hear what you say about the ultra. Uh, I wouldn't wait and see what we say. I would wait. I would read uh, you know the extreme sports magazines. Okay. Yeah, because what you want is a head to head things. versus the ultra versus the Garmin, and and you know which okay. is better. It is cheaper than the Garmin. Okay. By a couple hundred bucks, uh, but that's okay. you know you're spending a lot of money for that watch. So, I I think yeah. ultimately Apple's advantage is they're a juggernaut, and they have resources yeah. far beyond anything Garmin has. Absolutely. So if Apple wants to beat Garmin, they just flip a switch. They do because they just throw money at it, uh, and I think they yeah, benefit yeah. a lot from the way they study these things. Um, okay. uh, you know, my, my, my gut is it's going to be at least as good as the Garmin and it has two, like the Garmin, it has two GPS receivers. It has, so it can triangulate. It has the emergency feature, which I think is interesting. Crash protection, which I, uh, yeah, Garmin does not have. I kayak too. Yeah. I kayak too on the West yeah. Coast. Than when I yeah. Yeah. I okay. think this is a good watch Great. for a kayaker. I really do. I want to be you when I grow up. I know. <laughs> you, you are an extreme sports fanatic. Pretty 
lucky. Pretty lucky. <laughs> well, that's why you live in Port Friday or wherever. Where is Friday Harbor? Oh, no, Friday Harbor, the San Juan Island. Oh, I'm Vancouver, so jealous. Vancouver Island. Yeah, I know where the San Juans yeah. are. Oh, you're really up there. I, so you're an adventurer. I, uh, I hope so, yes. I try. Nice. You know yeah. what? I want your review of the Apple Ultra. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's whose review. You want to read somebody like you's I'm review. Also, I'm also interested in the health benefits because I am um, a cardiovascular intensive care nurse retired, and I like the health aspect. Well, I think, again, Apple has the lead by far in that, and they have decided, they've made that a key part of their business. So I think Apple's always going to... Yeah. Uh, be ahead of anybody in that regard um, for yep. AFib and uh, you know a lot of yep. ha various irregular heart irregularities. I think it's a really amazing device. But I think yep. what you would yep. want to get if you had it is the Cardia K A R D I A. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Uh, I've heard of it. Yeah, so that's going to be more accurate if 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 i were an afib patient uh jeff jarvis uh, was he's his cardiologist said get the cardia and uh he uses that if anytime he f you know he's at all concerned uh, and it'll give you a fair it's still only a two lead ekg it's not you know anything like a hospital ekg but it give, but he could but he sends it directly to the physician and the physician could say mm -hmm. yeah get in here or take your meds or whatever and uh so oh, yeah. That's going to be That's very interesting. interesting. Yeah, K A R D I A dot com. Um, Got it. But yeah. I, but I, and and that works with uh, any phone. That doesn't require an Apple Watch. But the Apple Watch, I, you know, oh. it's also going to do temperature. Uh, it's going, it's it's interesting. There, it's very limited because of where it is on your wrist. It can't really do a good AKG or okay. even a. Go ahead. Does it do water temperature? Because it's 54 degrees water temperature. I'm it wondering. does water temperature, yeah. It'll measure your water temperature. Okay. It's a, the, it has that full feature as part of the dive computer. Oh, man. I can't wait. Beautiful. To, I, this may make me an extreme sportsman. Yeah. Yeah. I may, I may go trekking. <laughs> See, there's the aspirational aspect. <laughs> hey, it's a pleasure meeting you, Susan. Right, oh, you the guys. San Juan Islands. I'm so jealous. You guys. How beautiful. Oh, come up sometime. I will. We want to move We want to move up there. I Just so beautiful up there. I don't think we'll go that far north, yeah. but yeah, I think it's beautiful. Uh, uh, and, I, and it's right. not burning down, which is another benefit. That is a benefit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Thanks, Susan. <laughs> Take care. Take care, you guys. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Portugal the man coming up. <laughs> uh, I feel bad. We we put him on hold. Johnny, uh, oh, here, I'll press the button now. J John, we're going to go to you in a few minutes. Can you hang on? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm just on Google Voice. It's free as the uh Free as the wind. As uh, the wind. Oh, you're the guy who retired to the Algarve. Yes, sir. I'm so jealous. Another person I'm jealous of. <laughs> Forget Washington. I'm be, going yeah. to Portugal. Now it's time for Portugal. You still happy? Do you go to anywhere. Spain at all? You said you were going to be able to go to Spain a lot. Yeah, we're right across. I can see Spain from my house. We're right across the river, so we go there all the time. Oh, I'm so jealous. I'm so <laughs> jealous. That's wonderful. Because, yeah, because you have a Schengen passport now. Actually, yeah, do yeah. you or not? Did you did you uh, did you take residency? Yes, because we have we have residency like pro, uh, temporary residency, and yeah. then after two years we'll have permanent residency, and then after that we'll have dual citizenship. You had to learn a little Portuguese to do that, right? Sim, bom dia, boa tarde. That's it. <laughs> Abrogado? No, no, you have, <laughs> you have to learn. Yeah, to, in five years we have to pass a test, uh, but it's very basic, I, and I could probably already pass it. Good. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that scared me a little bit. That's like the Morse code test for your ham license. <laughs> That's the one extra little thing. And and do you have to make an investment or just bring a certain amount of money in with you? What's the... No, no, because we've got a residence visa, D7 visa. It was um, a minimum amount of income, which is not very much. It's it's only, you know, and passive income they're looking for for yeah. the retiree. Yeah, retirement income. That's what I have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So in, in, in the, the 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 minimum, the average wage here is only about a thousand euros a month, wow. and you only have to make that. But it, to bolster your case, it, you know, you should be a little bit more than that. But you know, we, we did okay uh, moving from Santa Cruz. You know, so oh, so jealous. So, uh, and and it's been you've been on a year now, right? Yeah, about a year and four months. Yeah. Have yeah, you? Have right. you? A call from, uh, from Santa Cruz, John. I remember. To San yeah, Diego. yeah. No, I remember. I remember yeah, the whole story. Yeah. Did you? Uh, so you've acclimated pretty well. You're happy. You don't miss uh, home. 
No, no, we, uh, no, not at all. Because, you know, a, a lot of the, we're not, we're just on the podcast, right? So it's, yes. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it was because of the, you know, 2016. Yeah. You know, we don't, yeah. Get, you know, you tell me what happens in November and that's, with yeah. Flags hanging out the back. Yeah. Coming of, if, if, uh, exactly. <laughs> a neutral way to say it is Portugal in the in the in the in the global rankings. It's like the fourth safest country. On I the know. Wow. I've been looking at those rankings. I know. So you think of it from a you know we're men and that's easy and you just think about it. But from a woman's perspective, yeah. it if they my wife can walk around you know at two in the morning if she wanted to. Not I'm like gonna, she's doing that, but no, you know, I'm gonna cry. It 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 is just. You know, it, the people are welcoming. It's super safe. Um, wow. And it's a social democracy. Once you get residency, you have universal health care. You know. All right. I'm going to do some research in Portugal let's now. Let's go. Twit to Portugal. Yeah, let's Bring go. Bring on, guys. Micah, come on over. Oh, We're ready. That's great. We are so <laughs> yeah. ready. Yeah, I mean, it's not Shangri-La. I mean, you bring yourself. Yeah, of course. No, stuff, I understand. But, you yeah. know. Yeah. And did you get an apartment or a house? What did you decide to do? We bought a villa, so it's connect. We're, we're in a historic district. Um, That's okay. Okay, just, okay. too know, much. No. <laughs> you know, we come out the door, and there's the bars and the restaurants and everything. Oh, it's, my it's word. Great. I'll tell you why I want to go. Two words. Jamón Ibérico. Ham something. Uh, Spanish ham. Oh, just Spanish ham. Oh, yeah. We go over into the stores over in Spain, and they just have these. I'm a, I'm a vegan. They have. Oh, well, you don't know anything about it, but they have the, a whole leg of lamb or ham out there. Yeah, yeah you wouldn't yeah. eat. Yeah. It easy to be vegan there? I bet it is, actually. It is because of the, uh, you know, the prices of everything. Yeah. Right? Like, we haven't the same inflation problem, but I mean, it's so the food is so much less expensive oh, than the EU standard. So like, you don't have to worry about organic as much and stuff. It's like the food is fresh and not as many uh, nasty pesticides and all that good Egg stuff. Eggplant piri piri, here I come. All right, hang on. We're going to now be on the show. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leah Laporte and Micah Sargent, your tech guys on the radio. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Or you can call us with Google Voice, like John did from Portugal. And it should cost you nothing. Website where we put all the good stuff, techguylabs.com. John on the line. From the is it is it the Algarve in Portugal on the down on the south side there? Yes, we're in a town called Vila Real de Sant Antonio in the extreme southeastern portion of the country, uh, right on the Spanish border. Oh, beautiful! Did you go to the F one race? <laughs> uh, the, I, it, it was really COVID, the one in Portimao. Yeah. Uh, so it was very restricted. In oh, okay. Do, and it's amazing they even pulled it off. But this year it wasn't on the schedule. But they do have the Moto GP there. Oh, so. fun. Portimao. It's the only place in Portugal I've been, uh, but it's beautiful, beautiful beach. Well, John, I, some of you will remember we talked to John a year and a half ago. He was, he was living in Santa Cruz thinking about retiring to Portugal, and I guess you're staying. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's just great. The expat community here, the people are super friendly. It's ranked as, it, it, it varies between the third and fifth safest country on nice. the planet. You know, all those Scandinavian countries always come in first, but Portugal, surprisingly, is one of the safest. Well, I'm very jealous, but uh, that's okay. I'll get to live vicariously through your adventures. <laughs> what can we What can we do to help you with your technology? Okay, there was a, a dimming discussion about the Sony, and that got me thinking about... Uh, my problem, and it, it's interesting, it's because it's, uh, I took Scott's advice and your advice and bought my first OLED. Yay. And um, it dims during the day. Right. It, it, when it, it happens, when I'm watching a static show, like I'm such a super fan, I'm one of these crazy nerds that watches Twit live. <laughs> Our podcast. Thank you. On the TV. Thank you, John. That's very nice of you. And we're going to burn <laughs> in your monitor because we leave our logos up all the yeah. time. I'm sorry. The, logo, the new the new Tech Guy logo with the circle and the Marconi Tower or whatever yeah, that thing gonna is. That's going to get burned into your TV. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm like, I'm Here, like, I'll take it down, down right now. Burn yeah. it <laughs> uh, have you seen any burn? OLEDs uh, do burn in. 
Uh, but all OLED screens really work hard not to burn in. They do the dimming, but they also do something called pixel shifting, where they actually imperceptibly will shift one pixel over. They'll rotate through the pixels uh, in order to prevent image retention. That's pretty effective. I, I've had a, an OLED TV for five or six years now with zero burn in. Um, the dimming, though, I yeah, I, that could be that would be annoying while you're watching it. Yes, it comes up. And it's weird because it's during we get a lot of ambient light, and I know Scott's in with the OLEDs. It's not good to watch it in a bright room, but this is even in that condition. This is the best TV I've ever owned. Oh, it's amazing, but, isn't it? But if I'm sitting watching, if I'm watching Twit. Uh, you know, even if it's a, re it's a replay because of the time difference, usually I don't get to watch live like right now. What time is it now? Um, it's like nine or ten, is, right? Yeah, it's nine oh nine. Yeah, yeah, nine at night. Yeah, it, it it it'll be the normal brightness, and then it'll dim like super dark after about five minutes, and oh, then I have to good. like pause it and do something else. And so I back. think you can turn that off if you go into the menu. There's probably an eco mode. And you being a conscious, good person in the setup probably said, yeah, yeah, do the eco mode. But oh, that yeah. may be a side effect of that eco mode. Okay. So almost certainly that, and it, that, you know, you, it, sh it shouldn't do that if you're watching it, right? I don't know how it would know if you're watching or not. I yeah, guess. Are you are you yeah, watching it's, from it's a, a smart the only app? Time or? It does it. I, I, I found some Reddit and stuff that said that it happened and this, this light shifting of the blacks and stuff when you're watching Game of Thrones or something. But this is the only time it happens if I'm watching the YouTube. Yeah, this is different than, than what Scott was talking about with the Sonys where uh, they, they actually uh, dim for other reasons, I guess. To not, I don't know why, but it's it, because the room has gotten bright, I guess. But I don't think that's a good thing to do. Uh, but that this is different. This sounds like it's to prevent do you think burning. It's, Leo, do you think it's the TV doing it? it? I'm I'm using a Roku and Express VPN. That's how I can use a Roku over here. Yeah. Um, I'm using a Roku Ultra, the latest Roku, and I'm using the OLED. Do you think it's the TV dimming it, or could it be the Roku? I could, I mean, I guess it could be the Roku. Roku does have a you know a, a screensaver that comes on. And it may even, yeah. as just like a computer, dim before it goes to the screensaver. All computers, you know, will have that setting where you dim it, if, uh, but this is when you're not using it. The thing is, the computer knows whether you're using it or not. If the mouse is being moved or the keyboard's being touched, they know. Yeah. Yeah. TV doesn't have, you know, any real idea, especially if you're watching streaming. From the TV's point of view, it could be you're not home. So... I don't. That's yeah, an that interesting is a, there question. There was a good bit of advice in the the sh, uh, the chat, which is that try using the built-in YouTube app on your TV. You almost certainly have one as a smart TV, and yeah. watch the live stream and see if it happens there. Because, you can also watch after the fact on the YouTube. Yeah, every show has its own YouTube channel on our and, podcast. And in that way, you would be able to tell then if it's the Roku or if it's the TV itself that's causing that. Uh, that that's issue. a great idea. I haven't I haven't used that A/B testing on that because it definitely has that smart feature in there. It has a YouTube app. Yeah. Uh, so Mike Mann in the chat room says the, the podcasts have very little movement, which is true. That's also true. Yeah. <laughs> but we sh we do t do take yeah. two, take three. We have several cameras, so there'll be singles and there's some movement. That's true. Yeah, they're switching between cameras. We're not moving because you know we're just sitting here. But uh, what do you think the what do you think the amount of safe time would be to to watch a static show on an OLED? Is there any kind of uh, any testing? Is it like Two hours, or is it... Well, there's a couple of things. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't leave it on all day for sure. Uh, yeah. Many OLEDs, uh, when you turn them off, have a mode where they correct for image retention. That's what it's called technically with an OLED. Uh, I have an OLED monitor. When I turn it off, it says, you want me to, uh, to, 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 I don't know what it does, massage the pixels? Yeah, I think they call it like pixel refresh <laughs> for some... Uh, your TV's probably doing it automatically without asking you, because that's annoying. 
Um, so I suspect your TV, modern TVs are doing everything they can to keep from burning in. It's like how we used to have to unplug our devices whenever after we got done charging them. These days, you don't have to worry about that. This is the same thing. If you've got a modern television, it has all of these protections in place. Yeah. Uh, so you don't necessarily I wouldn't worry about it. it as much. Yeah, I really wouldn't. Okay. Do you leave it on all day and all night? I mean, thank you. No, no. The, <laughs> the, you know, yeah. I, you know, some people, they just watch the, the CNN scroll was on there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. You get CNN corner. burn in. Yeah, at the gym. Yeah. That I see that on the TVs like, no, at the gym. No. Yeah. The, the 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 biggest static is watching, you know, uh, Twit on Wednesday or uh, or or your show on the weekend. Right. <laughs> and that's. I think you're fine. Yeah. It, it. I think you're fine. Uh, the what's happening with an OLED? It's not so much burn in as the fact that the different colors, the different pixels, age at a different rate. This was always in the early days of uh, OLEDs. The purple uh, aged very quickly, and so you would get this kind of weird effect after just a few years on OLED. They do a lot to fix that, uh, but that's what it is. And I think you'd have to really be aggressively. It'd be like at the gym where it's on one channel day and night. Yeah. And I don't think you're doing that. I think you're all right. Yeah, sounds good. <sighs> Go enjoy some uh, piri piri for me. <laughs> I will. Yeah. I, I can date I can date myself. The first concert I saw was Def Leppard in wow. nineteen seventy eight in Boston. Wow. Their now that must have been a good show. I could they tell were, you they were opening for like Judas Priest. <laughs> and all these it was back in the hair band days. I can tell you exactly. they're still pretty uh, darn good in twenty twenty two. They were very impressive. Their harmonies, their guitar playing, they were very tight. Uh, and they didn't have a lot of special effects on the stage. They didn't need them because they sounded great. So oh, fun, fun. Pleasure Thank talking you. to you. For your help again. All right, yeah. take care. Talk to you guys soon. Bye bye. Bye, John. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo. The phone number: Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent. We are your tech guys. Where's the Where's your call coming up in a little bit? You stay right here now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be real good. Yeah, you're gonna really enjoy it. <laughs> From 1925 comes the Is this Al Josen? Eddie Cantor. Eddie Cantor. The great Eddie Cantor. Uh, if you knew Susie like I knew Susie. This is episode 1925, so I guess from now on I can expect a, now that we've entered the recorded music era, uh -huh. Professor Laura, a song from that year every week. Let's try, anyway. We won't promise. Uh, the reason you want to know is because if you go to techguylabs.com, all the shows are there, and this is episode 1925, and you can go there and get all the links that we've mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I think we're helping people right now. Uh, you can also, uh, in the chat room, there's lots of information flowing. That'll get in there. Plus, uh, you'll get a transcription of the show, audio and video from the show, too, a few days after the fact. So it's kind of your one-stop shop, and it's free. It's free. In 1925, in London, United Kingdom, John Logie Baird successfully transmitted the first television pictures. And now here we are, a hundred years later, doing radio. Back to the... Are you, are you blown away, Micah? I'm a little blown away. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's been a long time. I think Laura thought you did a uh, 1925 I voice. I must have done a oh, 1925 radio yeah. voice yeah. while you were gone and yeah. I was here. <laughs> so you do do that. I guess I you do. You look bewildered. <laughs> I know. I was caught off guard. But yeah. Who knows? I just, I break into accents and voices and songs all the time. That's I good. I don't remember that I that do it. That bodes so. well for the if your future in radio, young man. <laughs> uh, you're crazy. The, yeah. Amel is on the line from Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, Amel. Hey, Leo. Can you hear me? Yes. Welcome to the show. Wow. Hey, what a pleasure. A uh, long time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Micah. Yeah. Yeah, it's great to have you on. What can we do for you? Yeah, so um, I am trying to decide if I should get my daughter a Apple Watch. She's uh, a second grader. Uh, we've been shopping around for a watch. There's like a bunch of kids' watch. T-Mobile uh, offers one where they can call mom and dad or 911. Um, so I myself, uh, I'm thinking I should maybe get one. So I bought the Ultra. 
and then maybe my wife and everybody. So we were doing some testing for um, just recently to make sure that this was going to work because we never used Apple Watches before, and, and, and I'm an analog watch guy. Do you have an iPhone, first of all? So my work forces me to get the iPhone. I did not <laughs> want to get the Apple Watch for the longest time, and I'm with Andy Anatko. I was listening to your, you know, the live event during the Apple event, and I did not, like, I, on principle, I avoided getting the Apple Watch because it forces you to get an Android, and I'm sorry, an Apple and I, I, I have to use an Apple because my work forces me to. Good, because there's no point in getting an Apple Watch unless you have an yes. iPhone. Exactly. You must have it. Right. But the good news is they also, and yeah. you, you're probably aware of this, they have a way of setting up a kid's watch so they don't have to have an iPhone. Yeah. Only dad or mom has to have an iPhone. Right, right. right. So that's not the question. Um, so, so I just got the SE um, like on 9-5, right? Like a few days ago, the event. For my wife, then we activated it, and then I just canceled it already. I'm returning that, but we did an experiment where um, I put my wife's phone on airplane mode, then I called the watch. T-Mobile's website has like a unique new number for the watch, right? right? So I called that number, It's uh, and the number that I'm phone I was using to call was my work phone, which is a Verizon iPhone. Uh, it said like Verizon cannot complete this call because I don't know, right? So. So that didn't work. Um, then I called my wife's number, which is you know a T-Mobile number. I called that. It went to her voicemail because that that is a that is a um, it's on airplane mode, right? Uh, normally, if it is not on airplane mode, the watch rings. She can walk around the house. She, can, she was driving one time, so we were sold on the Apple Watch. It was going to work great, except if, if let's say I was I was out and about without my phone and with just my watch. Is that possible would, would that work this is actually a really good question um obviously you need cellular get the watch with cellular yes. that's I, I sign up for that's a given right like the, so yeah, it, that way it has and and you and you know that because it has a phone number mm -hmm. um i would you know honestly for a second grader what do you what do you want you want to know where she is and you want her to be able to reach mom and you want mom to be able to reach her is that or is those right. so all the right and all the kids in the neighborhood, they have this little thing. Um, they sell it on Amazon, and, and, and T-Mobile sells it, right? You have to have a wash plan, at least $10. That's, like, normal. And, and they can call. So most of the time, they can call the numbers that are configured. Usually it's parents' number, right? And then I think they can call 911. So that was the one we were about to get. We've been researching for, Is like, that the sync up? Um, it's, it's the only one that T-Mobile offers. Yeah, I think that's the sync up. Yeah. Um, so there is an yeah. advantage to getting it from T-Mobile, you know, bec yeah. and it is a kid's watch. Um, and it's, okay. you know, as a result, it's going to be uh, right. less expensive uh, and T-Mobile will... Right. They would, right, but they are practically giving away a SE and I bought the Ultra. So I already bought a SE for my watch. It's on the way, the new one. So can he make a? I think can he can, call a watch? I think you can place calls from the Apple Watch when it is not connected to a phone. But I am not seeing anything that suggests you can call. Like, could I leave my phone behind? Right, 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 right. Could I leave my phone behind? Yeah. I'm um, turning my phone off. Yeah, let's let's. And you can try. call my call my. Well, I don't know what my watch number is. I think so. For you, you are, are you on AT and T or Verizon? Uh, T Mobile. Oh, you're on T Mobile. Okay, so I don't know how T Mobile does it, but AT and T and Verizon they do a pairing where your phone. Yeah, I think that's the same. same. So call my my yeah, regular I will, number. I will call. You know you. the nine seven one number. Only Micah has this number. A five 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 number. Not even my my wife knows this number. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he's going to call. I've turned off my phone, so the phone is no longer in proximity to the watch. Does does it go straight to voicemail or does We're it calling uh, now? Does it call my watch? All right, here. It's funny. You would think we would know this. Yeah, but I've never. I get calls on my watch all the time, but I'm never without my phone. Right. I think right. it went to voicemail. Yeah, it went to voicemail. Went to voicemail. Did not ring my phone, my watch. Yeah, I think you can only that's place awesome calls, point. not receive Outbound, them. not inbound. Mm -hmm. I think that sounds right, yeah. So I could, so that's probably not what you want. No. I want to receive their call. At least, so at least what I know I think was going to happen is if I give this to my daughter, set it up as my, you know, kid's profile. I think, I believe she will be able to do what the sync up watch can do. I think that's a given. That's right. Um, I just wanted... Yeah, and I always want to make sure, so my wife wasn't sure, so we did an, I'm an engineer and she's a scientist, so we do so ah, I love it. Experiment. So you did a real experiment. That's yeah. awesome. Right. Um, right, and, and it, it did not serve that purpose, but now I'm committed. I'm already like, there's uh, three Apple Watches on its way. and, and Can, she, can you text? You could text the watch. Yes. 
Yeah. So you can send text messages, which your child will see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're all on iMessage, then yeah. those will go through. I'm not. I don't know if SMS text. But you cannot call it. She can call emergency services. She, and can and she can call, call mom. anybody? Yeah. No. No, yeah. So that, I don't think it's going to be a problem. She can have the Apple Watch. I was just now, it seems like I myself will have to make sure I have my phone with me and the watch if I want to make sure I get a call from my wife or anybody on the watch. On the you watch, know. yes. Right, right. So maybe No, it, no. Yeah, I guess so. I thought that they wanted it so you could run so, without your phone and answer the phone. Yeah, so did I. I think the Ultra will do that. I'm yeah, betting the Ultra I, will do that. This I is a good question. The ultra, I'm gonna do some You're more. You're getting the Ultra. You let us. You let us know, Amal. Yeah, I'm gonna look into this <laughs> more too. Get you. I'm with you all, all the way. We'll figure this out. Keep listening. Maybe we'll come up with an answer. Leo and Micah, your tech guys. That's a really interesting yeah. question. I don't. I, we should know this. I just assumed that it worked that way. Um, but we just verified that. You you can't call me when my phone is off. Right. It just it uh, so the f- phone needs to be on. Does the phone have if the phone were not in proximity to the watch would it work? If the phone is not in proximity to the watch. Like, like I left the phone at home. Uh-huh. See, that wasn't a real test because yeah. uh what if I left the phone at home? It's, could you then call my watch? I don't think so. Because it seems what what I'm reading from the support documents that are available is that you can call from the watch, but you but cannot not call to. to the watch. Should I put the phone somewhere? Let me let me. Uh, I don't know if you can get it far enough away because it's. Well, I'm on the same Wi-Fi, and that's oh, yeah, probably just, a problem. Just turn off Wi-Fi on your phone. That would be enough. Okay, yeah, go into airplane mode, right? No, yeah. would that work? I think that's no airplane what... mode would turn off the cellular. Oh, yeah, that's true. So I'll just turn off the... <laughs> I'm all... We need your wife, the scientist, to help us here. <laughs> we cannot... Okay, so I, we can't come up with an experiment. I actually, <laughs> I actually have been to a Apple, like, in Fox on Factory, right, installing an equipment. Wow. In Shenzhen, they sell, they sell an Apple Watch um, that looks like an Apple Watch. You put a SIM card in. <laughs> you can that's call hysterical. It. I mean, they, they can... They, they look, it looks like a real oh, yeah. Apple Watch, pretty much. But you can put a SIM card in. It's running Android with an Apple skin, wow. and you can call, call. <laughs> wow. You can't buy it in America, obviously, right? So yeah. This is a disappointment, but I avoided Apple Watch not because, you know, I mean, it, you don't need, you should have something that's, like, untethered, and you can rely on, like, you want, it's okay, I can pay for the service, even the satellite, I don't, you know, but I want to get call and receive call. I thought that was given, but maybe it's not, or I don't know. Confused now. I'm now confused. You've confused me too. Uh, I, I don't know what the answer is on this one. I'm really. I, I do have an answer for Micah. I was uh, listening at the top of the show with uh, with the Air, AirPod Pros. Mm-hmm. Um, so so mine came off, and I I couldn't figure out how to put it back together because it was torn. So in the packaging they had you know the other piece. So I, I put the new one in. It almost looks like they molded over on the plastic silicone. So these pieces are like, uh, uh, you know, plastic molded, silicone molded over the plastic, uh, the chips that are interchangeable on the airport pros. So I think you guys are talking about that at the beginning. I think you can just stretch it over, right? The hole, it just stretches no. over. No. No? no the, the thing, the individual pieces in the packaging, like if you open a, a AirPod Pro packaging, you have the spare chips. If you look underneath, they almost have like a mesh grill. Oh. And, oh wait, no, no, they almost have a rim though. They do have a plastic piece. Each of them do. And then there is a white silicone over it. So yeah. it's like a two-piece plastic. So it would have to fit. There's a hard plastic not collar. Only, not only that. Not only that. Like, uh, so I accidentally clips. dropped everything on the, on the floor. And then they label it left and right on the on the on the on the box. But if you want to put it back together, it's indistinguishable. <laughs> How do you know which one's left and which one's right? So the left and right are different. And then the wow. housing is made out of paper, so when you take it out, right, you don't know, and it's not indented in a certain way that it would fit. You think Apple designs it so you can't go, you know, like a book your but. But now it's dropped. I don't know which one's left. You need to bring it to the Apple store where the genius will yeah. wave a wand over it <laughs> that it has a special RFID in it, in and it will tell you. Oh, they got. They have the tip thing. Or they have the app where you can like sign it to a ear channel, so that's okay. <laughs> you can try all of those combinations until it fits just right, right? No wonder you hate Apple, Emil. I understand <laughs> now. I'm a fanboy. No, I'm a fanboy. <laughs> oh, you're a fanboy. I love Android because. I can, you know, mod and... I yeah, can, you want to hack it. Yeah. Which yeah, Android Android phone do you like? 
Um, I don't have one now. Um, well, I, I had a, a Samsung, but I really, I don't know. All of them are awesome. A Pixel, last one that I have right now that I that I keep as a backup for emergency is a Pixel 2 XL. Oh, wow. That has my Bitcoin. Yeah, that has my, because I'm not going to repeat your mistake, so I have that as my, like, <laughs> A wallet as like a... Oh, good. I'm, like I'm glad you've wallet learned wallet. from my stupidity. <laughs> Got to run, Amol. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. <laughs> no. <laughs> Leo Laporte, Micah Sargent, your tech guys, 8888-ASK-LEO. That's kind of embarrassing mm-hmm. that here we have been using Apple Watches, you and I, probably for seven or eight years, never even thought about it. No. Because that's because we carry around iPhones. Uh-huh. Everywhere How, we go. Can, can you call an Apple Watch... If it is not in the presence of an iPhone, now we've shown that if the iPhone's turned off, it won't work. And, and we should also be clear that um, if you have Wi-Fi calling turned on, if you're connected to a Wi-Fi network from your Apple Watch, it is it will maybe work. <laughs> we just don't know. We just don't. Know. I am going to leave my phone at home tomorrow, and you will call me. Okay. And we will see. All right. Apple yeah, is just... promoting though and slowly moving towards the Dick Tracy idea because the new Apple Watch Ultra they even mentioned this you can place and receive calls from the Apple Watch Ultra and they now have three microphones in it yeah. and stereo All sorts of speakers noise cancellation and... and it's louder and so they're really uh, pushing I think towards the idea of the, and this has always been a question with Apple Watchers do they at some point want this watch to stand alone or will it always be an accessory for the iPhone? Right. You saw Tim Cook speaking at the uh, D conference oh, uh, yeah. last week. And somebody asked him, you know, Google's had this big push to get Apple to support Google's RCS protocol. It's an open standard, but Google's pushing it. And, you know, Apple, enough with the green, blue bubbles. Apple, support RCS. So somebody asked Tim Cook about that. Uh, he said to uh, Tim, he said, you know, my... Uh, my mom uh, has a as an Android phone, and she we can't message with her. When are you are you going to ever support RCS? And Tim's response: Get her an iPhone. <laughs> Get her an iPhone. Uh, yeah, not exactly responsive, but I, honestly, that's what I always thought Apple's position was. No. They're- we're not going to do this because you need an iPhone. You should have an iPhone. Why don't you have an iPhone? And I hate to to now go back a little bit, but um, there is now a support document that shows uh, use your Apple Watch without your iPhone nearby. Here's what you can do even when your iPhone isn't with you. Good. And one of the things that it says is both make and answer phone okay. calls. Okay. So apparently you should be able to do this. I don't know why it didn't work for us. Well, because my phone was off. So here's what I think has to happen. You make the phone call. My phone then rings the watch, even if I'm not in the presence of the watch, because the watch has cellular. So my phone sends Uh, a signal to my watch. I'm just making this up. My phone sends a signal to my watch saying, you've got a call. Because, you know, the watch will say, you've got a call when your phone rings. So the only question is, does it have to be proximate to the phone to do that? And apparently, Apple's saying, no, your phone could be at home. It still, though, has to be on Uh and receiving phone calls. Yeah. Okay, I like that idea. We'll find out. I tell you what, you take the show. I'm going to go down the block. I'm going to leave my phone in a tree. <laughs> I'll, I'll come back. No, let's not do this. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Ask Leo Paul on the line from Venice Beach, California. Hello, Paul. Hey, I'm Mr. Leo. How are you doing, sir? I am well, Paul. How are you, sir? Good. You are a great philanthropist. You know, and uh, I must say, this is my first time calling. Thank you. I, okay. I have a iPhone 13 mini. I bought it on July July this year, and I want to switch to a Tesla Pi phone or iPhone 14. What do you recommend? I would not is what I would recommend. You have a recent enough iPhone. In fact, this is a good question that comes up every time. There's a new iPhone. Who should buy the new iPhone? And I think it's very clear that somebody with an iPhone 13, unless you don't like the mini, like the size is too small, yeah, and you want a bigger phone, sense. then maybe. But there is nothing, in my opinion, and you, you, Micah, you get to weigh in on this too, but there's you've actually seen it. I don't think there's anything in the iPhone 14 that would make you spend all that money two months later. Don't spend all that money on the dynamic island or the slight upgrades to the photography. I mean, okay, uh, I take this back. There's one instance where I may make this argument outside of, like you said, switching sizes. And that's if, like, 
like you're a new parent or uh, have recently adopted a new animal and you want to get the best possible photos you can of said uh, But how child much better or, would they be? Well, with the 48 megapixel Maybe being a lot downscaled better. to 12 Maybe. megapixel and especially here's here's low why. light. This is where the yes. improvement is. And this is what people don't understand. Most photos that people are taking, everyday people that are taking, they're low light photos. People, when they think of low light photos, they're thinking it means that the lights are off. No, the photos that many of us take indoors are not taken with enough light. They are a higher light version of a low light photo. Yeah, anything that's not outside. Anything that's not outside is, is basically low light. a light photo. So you, most of the photos you'd be taking will be improved. So if you are looking for a better camera, then yes, you will see some updates. But I, I still think that if you've got the iPhone 13, unless you're ridiculous like Leo and myself, well, you're actually we, upgrading from the 12, aren't you? Yeah, we have to. Yeah, in fact, I took a big chance uh, not upgrading last year, uh, and nobody looked funny at me, I, you know, because we supposedly we're supposed to keep up with these. But honestly, I felt no obligation to go from the 12 to the 13. Because you stopped doing iOS today with me. <laughs> Maybe because I stopped doing the show. <laughs> but uh, I, I, frankly, I wouldn't feel, ex except for, uh, the, you know, a little desire to cover this and so forth, I probably wouldn't feel like I had to upgrade from the 12 to the 14. Right. And I think a lot of commentators have said that. Every year, Apple makes incremental upgrades. This year, especially incremental. The chip, for instance, in the iPhone 14 and the 14 Plus is the same chip as you have in your iPhone 13. No improvement at all. If you were to go to an iPhone 14 Pro... It's the new A16 chip, but it's only a, percent, a few percentage points faster, maybe 10% faster, probably not noticeably faster. 17% is the most I've seen. That's not enough to make it worth a thousand bucks. Now, you're going to get a trade in. Apple does offer trade ins. And since you bought your iPhone 13 mini in two months ago, you might be able to get a decent price for it. So it might only be a few hundred dollars upgrade. So that's perhaps something to consider. There is no mini this year the minis are gone so the smallest phone you can get is 6.1 inches which is pretty pretty big compared to what you've got absolutely uh and the and the plus and the max are uh are uh, 6.7 inches it's even bigger so you may not you know like that i th i honestly think anybody with an iphone that's not more than a couple of years old you should just stay where I you agree. are I agree. stay where you are the watch even more so Oh, yeah. The, do not. If you've got the last series, the Series 7 Apple Watch, almost certainly you should be not. You should not be upgrading unless you're going to the Ultra, in which case you've got reasons for that. That's just that. a different product entirely, yeah. really. Yeah. For, but from the Series 7 to the Series 8, they're, almost all of the new features for the Apple Watch are uh, operating system features, are watchOS features. So those software features will be available. Like I am running the beta of watchOS on this Series 7 Apple Watch, and I can do the cool wayfinding stuff with the Compass app, uh, which was one of the new features. So there's, there's these little new features. Uh, if you can, I think it's worth going to Apple and saying, look, here's a two-month-old yeah, iPhone 13 mini. What will you give me for it? If they'll give you close to what you paid for it in order to buy a new phone, it might be, then it's a decision on which phone am I going to like better. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is, that's, you know, that's a little different. I, I certainly don't think you need to, uh, anybody with uh, anything bef after the iPhone 11 probably does not need, to, shouldn't feel the need to upgrade. And it's really unfortunate because Apple, there's this whole marketing machine that goes into gear when Apple releases a new iPhone that really makes everybody feel like, oh, I have the old one. Yeah. I, I mean, need it is the their main one. product. It is the, the thing that has made... More than the half company. of their revenue it comes from today. the iPhone. And uh, they are brilliant at marketing. Nobody, do, There's no better company in the world at marketing than Apple. And so they're very good at creating a false, I think, a false need uh, to upgrade. So... What we're trying to do is give we you try an to be antidote, cognizant of that, yeah. antidote to that. Uh, they call it the reality distortion field. But what about the Tesla phone? <laughs> I never heard of a Tesla Neither phone, I. so I don't know what you were talking about there, uh, Paul. I'm afraid I can't help you uh, with with that. Say hi to my friends on Muscle Beach. 8888 ask. Oh, no. I'm not going to give out the number because you know what? I see I see the, the oh, fog machine is working. Check it They've out. They've fired up the disco ball. There goes the I disco. believe Dick D. Bartolo's next. Stay tuned. Everybody, clap. 
My hands are still sore from that concert. Every other song. They said, put your hands together. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's get Disco D in here. Disco Dick D. Bartolo Mad Magazine's maddest writer and the giz whiz. Hello, Dickie D. Leo, how you doing, pal? I welcome you with a toot of the vuvuzela. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. whoa. laughs> The royal treatment over here. He's, he's the, yes, yes. The fanfare. What do you get? Dick joins us every week uh, with a cuckoo gadget or gizmo. That's why we call him our gizmo wizard or gizwiz. But you may know the name Dick D. Bartolo. I bet you do. If you grew up like I've I did. I've heard it. <laughs> have, you, have you heard it? Is it on your driver's yeah. license? Yeah. Or do you make it up? Yeah. No. no. no they're good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 50 years, five decades, he's been a uh, stalwart at Mad Magazine. Uh, and also, of course, the match game. He saved the match game. Uh, and he, we are lucky enough to have him as our gizmo wizard. Hello, Dickie D. Leo, good to see you, pal. Tonight, the final silent disco because the summer is ending. So, so where do you go? So you're in, Manhattan, you're in Manhattan. You, you put the headphones they're, they're on. At, <clears throat> yes. You and they're, Dennis they're do places. this, right? Exactly. Lincoln Center did it like every, once a month. Wow. And they do it on the pier at 70th Street and the Hudson River. That's the wow. best. Because you're out in the river and uh, you wear headphones. Do you have to wear your hip deep. waders? <laughs> no, unfortunately, the dock is above water. It's oh, something okay. new they're trying this year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that sounds like fun. So this is the last yeah, one? It, <clears throat> the, the last one for this year. Is it weird um, uh, when you get there because you don't hear music, right? No, it's we the, the weirdest is Lincoln Center. When when the bus goes by, you see people all a thousand people at Lincoln Center, and not a sound. They they have a, they have another concert going on with a band, and they don't interrupt each other because the disco's quiet. And you're all wearing you don't headphones. hear the band, yeah, because you're wearing headphones. It's 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 really great. That sounds like so much fun. Well, have a great it's time. Great. The last uh, silent disco is coming up. Meanwhile. Yeah. What's what's meanwhile, uh, Leo? Everybody is going to conferences. So while you guys, well, at least Micah was at Apple. Yeah, I was at Bose on oh. on the very oh. same day. You know, you've been going to these Bose events since Amar Bose. Uh, yes, ran the company I, way back. I, when. I I had lunch with them twice at one at these events, and uh, they they're carrying on without him. Well, what's great about Bose is uh, unlike CES and stuff, Bose sort of sets aside like eight hours and you pick a half hour and you go in, you can oh, nice. show up early or late and they have drinks and food if you're early and you can stay and, and they you know, just do 12 people, 12 people at a time. It's interesting that they did this the same week Apple announced their yes. updated AirPods pro direct yes. competitor to the quiet comforts, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. But the demo was so, so great. So you, 12 people go in at one time and you put on... This would be good now, for the, the silent disco, come to think of it. Oh, it'd be great, yeah. <laughs> so now these are called Quiet Comfort Earbuds 2. So you put them on and the app tells you whether you have them on the best way they can. It'll, like, Dennis had a check for his right ear and a guy walks around and says, you know, your left ear. And he says, oh, you know what? Your ears are slightly different. Anyway, they fixed him up. Do you change the, the tips or you just... That's what they did. They wow. said, you know, that you'll just do this once. See, this is the hardest thing have... with all of these earbuds or many of them, not all yes. of them. Yes. The AirPods don't, but the AirPods Pro come with these tips, silicone tips, and you got to pick one that's right for your ear. But you have to do it yourself. You have to go, oh, well, that sounds good. No, that's better. And this is cool. Yeah, so they, the, they, they yes. will tell you. So the good. app, the yes, the app will give you a quick test. Oh, well, it's Micah wearing them already. <laughs> it does kind of look like me. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, a, a, a little bit. Uh, so what they do for the demo is you do that, and then they play some music, and, and uh, overhead it says, please go to uh, the mode where you can also hear me talk over your music, the aware mode. And then they say, go back to the music mode, the noise reduction mode, and you're listening to music. And suddenly, all around the room, you see projections of subway trains. And I'm thinking, what, what? is this? Yes. And then the projection says, take your earbuds out for a second. Yeah. You take them out. There are roaring, screaming, And you screeching. didn't hear it. You couldn't hear no. it. No. 
You wow. couldn't hear it. That's a at good all. test. That was amazing. So Apple, so with then, their AirPods Pro, says they've made the noise canceling twice as good. I don't know what that means. They also have adaptive noise canceling. Like as you're walking around, if there's a jackhammer or noisy subway, it will adaptively cut that out. I bet you Bose is doing something similar. I bet you. I'll tell you what they're doing. Because yeah. after this, you uh, you can sit with an engineer. And so I sat with uh, John Rule, who's the lead engineer on this. He said, Dick, five years ago, we figured... Everybody's pretty much nailed noise cancellation. Yeah. What can we do to? But Bose really... invented it. I think Bose was the first to they, do it. They right? did invent yeah, it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was. I think the government needed help with pilots, especially in battle, oh. with being able to hear. <laughs> I thought they were going to say <laughs> and... we we didn't want to hear all the journalists at the press conferences. Are there some <laughs> way to tune them out? All right, pilots. So this is this is what they came up with. They came up with something called custom tune technology, where was it, when you first put the earbuds on, there's a little ping you hear, and that goes and figures out how big your ear channel is, and then will adjust wow. what the equalization that you have set is, and it sets it for your ears. Mm -hmm. I think and in theory you can do this, but you have to use you have to have a modern iPhone and you aim it at your ear. And I don't know anybody who's ever done this, but it models your ear and then tells the earbuds what shape. This all is contained oh, in the okay. head headphones. You don't need any special. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, this is once once you have the tight seal, then that little sound goes off ah. and customizes it too. And I think that's maybe why. They could have all that loud noise going in the room. That's amazing. Not real. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, they're coming. They're embargoed until Thursday. They're going to be two ninety nine, and they're just called uh, Quiet Comfort earbuds too. <sighs> uh, I was very impressed with them. Fifty bucks more uh, than the iPhones. I mean oh, the they AirPods. Are. <sighs> um, yeah. And I just bought the AirPods, and I'm wondering if I should compare them to the. I don't want to spend another 300 bucks. I have so many earbuds. <laughs> you, how do these compare? You you recommended a few weeks ago the Anchor Soundcore earbuds. And I know a lot of our listeners bought them because you recommended them. Yeah, no, I, I think they're great. Now, I don't have these yet to compare ah, them. So we can't. It, it, okay. it, I just know from the demo, okay. you know, we all wore them. Um, what, what I was particularly impressed with is how they can block out uh, outside noise if you want. And then, of course... Uh, on the street, just make sure you're in aware mode so you know what's going on uh, around you. Well, honestly, uh, the reason Bose took off is because uh, business travelers, it's so fatiguing to hear this jet noise for four or five hours flying across the country. They And, and for a while, every airplane... Everybody had Bose headphones all the way down. Yes. Everybody, yes. right? Yes. Uh, there's yes. been a lot more competition uh, ever since, but it'd be Ab interesting to see what they Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that what uh, the engineer was saying is that we've had to now do something else to try yeah. and distinguish yeah. ourselves. Sure. Since everybody caught it's up. It's competitive, yeah. But yeah, Amar Bose absolutely. invented them okay. way back yeah. when. Find yeah, out more at Dick's website, G-I-Z-W-I-Z -I -Z dot B-I-Z. Click, click the button that says the Gizwiz visits the tech guy. While you're there, you might want to click a couple of other buttons, uh, including the what the heck is it button for a chance to win an autographed copy of Mad Magazine by identifying. What do you think that is, Micah? Have you seen this oh, before? That is definitely mm. a silencer to add to the end of a space age oh. um, blaster. I see. I thought it was uh, a hyperbaric chamber for a miniature uh, Michael Jackson. Oh, okay. Uh, but I might wow. be. I could be oh, wrong. You on guys that. are so close. <laughs> Just right we are there. not going to win an autographed copy of Mad Magazine, but you might. Uh, Gizwiz biz, and of course Gizwiz TV for Dick's great podcast. Thank you, Dickie D. Thank you, bud. Thanks, Micah Sergeant. Thanks Thank to you, all of yeah. you. We'll see you next time. The Tech Guys. Bye -bye. Have a great geek week. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon 
This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.